Hey guys, Matt here, and today in this video we're going to be going through the top 60 games uh, available for you to learn Japanese with on the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch is an absolutely ridiculously good platform for helping you learn Japanese. Absolutely ridiculous. It is possibly the greatest console ever made uh, for learning Japanese. I remember back in the day it used to always be recommended to get like a DS or something to help you learn Japanese, but I think now the Nintendo Switch has taken the crowning spot for the very very best console that you could possibly have to help you learn Japanese with. So today I'm going to go through those top 60 games and kind of give you guys my thoughts and opinions about what the games are like for learning Japanese with, why they're good, what kind of special things they have that can help you as a language learner, and perhaps what kind of level the game is best suited for. Just a quick note before I start, I live in Japan and so all of these games I'm going through from the perspective of something that is available to someone living in Japan. Now obviously most of you don't live in Japan uh, and so it's going to be a little bit challenging for you to buy these games. Good news is this is actually easier um, than for example if you were trying to buy a game on Steam. That's very strictly region locked. However the Nintendo Switch allows you to simply change your profile, your account, um, to a Japanese account and then you can have access to the store and all of the games that are available in Japan. The trick is when you pay for those games. Um, a lot of your credit cards around the world are not going to be accepted um, so you may need to either use gift cards to buy the game, a Japanese card or some sort of international uh, you know, payment system that allows you to play for some of these games. I'm not entirely sure of the exact um, process to go through all of it, so it may change depending on your region. For some games, it's simply as easy as just switching your profile and your game is now available, but for others you need to actually buy it from the Japanese store, and some of them you may need to use gift cards or whatever to get them. So if the game's not available for you overseas, I'm very, very sorry. Um, these are all of the games that are available in Japan to help you learn Japanese with and a lot of these probably most of them <laughs> um, you will be able to get if you use some of the tricks to help you buy on the Nintendo eShop. So without further ado let's have a look at the top 60 games for helping you learn Japanese with on the Nintendo Switch. So let's go through uh, the list. I'm just going to go through this just a random order. So the first game we have here is uh, Moji Pitan Ankoru. So this is a bit of an interesting game right here. Uh, I'm not really too sure where to rank this game because what it is, is it's kind of like a crossword dictionary game. <laughs> the way the game works is you have a kind of list of just characters like kaki, kuke, ko um, that you can use to create words with. And then you need to kind of fill the board with, you know, the letters, kind of like a crossword, um, and making words with it. Now, the fun thing about this game is that when you make a word, um, a dictionary definition pops up in Japanese, and so that can allow you to actually kind of learn some Japanese, also test your Japanese knowledge. So it's a bit of an interesting one, right? Um, you can learn Japanese in Japanese, but it's very much based on your knowledge of Japanese in order to be able to play. So it's not necessarily a great game for, you know, beginners or people starting out, but it's Definitely an interesting choice, an interesting game to kind of mess around with. Um, it is quite difficult, I must admit. Um, you know, I've, I've played it for a while and it's quite difficult. Um, you know, there might be times where I'm completely stuck and I'm just randomly throwing words down and just kind of hoping something appears. And sometimes something does and you're like, cool, I just learn a random word. <laughs> uh, it's not the best game in the world, but it's certainly an interesting choice. So for that reason, oh, I would say I would probably put it somewhere around the decent or okay range. Um, look, I'm not going to be telling everyone you gotta get this game, um, but if it sounds interesting to you, if you're kind of interested in kind of, you know, doing crossword type puzzles um, in another language and learning at the same time, then it could be really cool for you. Um, I really like it. I think it's really interesting. I would say it's probably, I would put it at the more decent-ish range. You can look at the game's dictionary at any time and actually you read up the words that you've learned so it, the dictionary definitions don't just fly away. So it's relatively decent. Now this game does actually have a free trial available so you can actually just go right now uh, and check out the game if you if you would like. It's also available on Steam as well um, but on the N Nintendo Switch it has a free trial so it's definitely worth kind of checking out and figuring out if you like it or not. 
Okay, the next game we have here is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, here we have Triangle Strategy, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, this game, I am just so happy the way it turned out. Um, it was already looking to be a really cool, interesting game, um, but then, just as a game by itself, but then they went ahead and added complete logs for all of the dialogue that's available in the game. Uh, this game has a ton of voice acting, and it's all logged, so you can instantly replay any any line of dialogue that you want from the entire game at any point in time. It's ridiculous. Um, personally, I'm a huge fan of the genre of kind of, you know, Game of Thrones, um, Arslan Senki, this kind of medieval fantasy type realm, right? So this game is like that to the max, right? An absolutely insane game. Uh, this game is so amazing. I have to put this as a must buy. Um, this game is not only an incredible game, it has, you know, branching paths and like heaps of dialogue and so much voice lines, but all of it is available with the logs. So at any point in time, if you see a piece of language you're really not sure about, you can always replay that audio as many times as you want until you're happy with it, uh, until you're happy with your understanding of the sentence or whatever. It's ridiculously good. I wish more games went down this direction of kind of having logs for all of the dialogue, even though it's not a visual novel game or anything, um, yet it still has a log. Absolutely ridiculous. I love this game so much. Highly, 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 highly recommended. There is one thing though, um, the game is quite difficult. Um, it is a little bit higher in terms of the language, right? Um, this is a little bit more for your intermediate advanced level students in terms of the language that's available in the game itself. That being said, you could play this game as a lower level student because of the fact that it has the logs. You can go through it as many times as you want. Um, you don't need to write down the kanji to find them because you just replay the audio and you get listening practice, right? What did they say? What did they say? And then just try and write the word in your dictionary. So really good game, um, but it is on the difficult end of language. Uh, I've actually did a small playthrough of it if you want to check it out. Uh, there's the first hour of Triangle Strategy video uh, that I'll put a link in the description uh, if you want to check Check out what this game is like. Very, very good though. This is an absolutely beautiful 2D, 3D strategy RPG uh, that is just insanely enjoyable to play. And good news, this game actually has a completely free demo that you can try out that actually has a significant portion of the game available for free. Um, so you can really figure out if this is something you're interested in. So definitely check out that free demo. The next game we have is Super Mario Odyssey. So this is an interesting one. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey does actually have quite a bit of language in it. It has a general narrative story that you can read and play along with. Uh, it's pushed to continue, so you can take it at your own pace. It has Furigana, which makes it very accessible um, no matter what Japanese level you are. And the language comes in kind of little bits and pieces here and there. So it's not like an RPG where you're just like thrown in the middle of this huge amount of text you need to read and then you get kind of you know, you can kind of get out of it a little bit when you focus too much on all of this text, especially when you're starting off like reading Japanese for like the first time. So this kind of game is actually pretty good for helping you learn Japanese because you really can just kind of play the game at your own pace and pick up some Japanese along the way. And it's very visual, the language that you come across, right? You might see, for example, a bridge and then you see Hashi, right? Uh, you might learn, you know, to throw something and you see Nagedo. It's very, very simple in its language. It's never too heavy. Um, and when you want to, though, you can actually have a bit of reading practice with um, the kind of area breakdowns. There's actually kind of like a brochure and you can read about the area areas and there's quite a little bit of reading practice there as well so it is actually a pretty cool game for learning Japanese with uh, definitely a fun one to play so I would say that this is mm, tough so it's oh, so I wouldn't put it as a must buy um, excellent it has furigana and you can take it at your own pace I would probably put it as great I think this is probably a decent place to put it. Um, the reason why it's not higher is because, well, there's not voice acting or replaying logs. Um, not having voice acting can actually make it a little bit duller for a learner um, because, you know, it's all up to you to read it. Um, so for that reason, I don't know, I don't know, maybe yeah, I just have an attention problem. But for me, voice acting really helps sell a game and make it interesting. I'd say it's pretty good, though. It's a really good game, um, especially with the Furigana. Nice level not too difficult for anyone, so definitely an interesting one to check out. The next game we have here is Live Alive. Oh my god. So I just checked this game out, um, also in kind of the first hour series style, so if you want to check that out, um, link in the description for that. Um, 
this is a really cool game. It's amazing. It's a really nice game. However, from a language learner's perspective, it's really tough. Um, there are kind of different characters that you can play and you can kind of have a story in a different setting, right? So you can have a robot story in the future, or you can have a cowboy story in the past, or a samurai story. And that really changes the level of language that you're going to come across. Um, in my own playthrough, I played through three different areas. Um, a, the little bit of the sci-fi, um, the Japan and China. And uh, Japan was incredibly difficult, kind of samurai era. Very, very difficult language. Um, the Chinese was relatively difficult. The, the sci-fi wasn't too bad. However, um, there's no log, unfortunately. The game is completely take it at your own pace, so you can push to continue the dialogue, and most of it is voice acted, so that's a real big thumbs up. So it's definitely a cool game, but um, for a language learner, it may be on the more difficult end of things. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have it as a super recommended game. I would put it as uh, decent to okay. Um, I initially actually wasn't going to have this game on my list back when I was trying to do a 50 game list. Um, but now that I've got it as a 60 game list because there are a lot of games that deserve to get covered in this video, um, this game made the cut. So I would put it at the bottom, but um, it's definitely an interesting, fun game. Actually, I might put Live Alive down as okay, um, because I don't necessarily would s suggest that it's better than it many other, any other game. So it's probably near the bottom of the list. Okay, the next game we have here is Miitopia. This is a cool one. Um, so this game is based around your Miis, right? Um, like in your Nintendo Switch, you can kind of create your own face and you can create your friends and your family. Um, and this game uses the faces of all of your friends and family's me um, and it actually makes them into the characters in a kind of RPG so it's an interesting premise um, the game itself however is pressed to continue and it has furigana so that makes it really really um, accessible in terms of a language learner the language is quite simple um, it's never too heavy never too difficult um, it has explanations for a lot of things you can actually read it all with furigana on the explanations so in terms of actually reading practice it's actually pretty cool um, generally a game that has you know furigana i would put you know, somewhere near great. That being said though, um, the story itself is a little bit dry. It's not necessarily the, its strongest point. The language is quite simple um, and the story is not going to grip you and make you keep, you know, continuing the game. It's just kind of really easy and accessible. So for that, I'd put it down at as, as a decent game. Um, not the greatest, but it has furigana and that's amazing for a Japanese language learner definitely something that could be useful for you if you want to kind of go through your first couple of games, kind of get some reading practice and kind of, you know, take things at your own pace, then Furigana and Press to Continue is really going to be helpful. Ah, next we have Fire Emblem Musou. Uh, so this is kind of the Warriors style game. It's kind of more of a Dynasty Warriors hack and slash type game, um, but set in the Fire Emblem universe. This game is ridiculous. <laughs> oh my God. So normally um, games that are really highly ranked um, for you know Japanese language learners are generally things like, you know, RPGs and things like that. But this game is actually a hack and slash and I've got to put it all the way at must buy. <laughs> uh, this is ridiculous. This game has um, logs that you can go through the entire game and have a look at all of the um, lines that have said and you can replay the audio and it's very nice clear presentable. You can see the characters faces with the lines. Very nice. Um, really good. Interesting right now that the top two games that we have right now are kind of more of the the medieval warring fantasy type games um, so they are difficult in the terms of language like this game you know fire emblem it's going to have some difficult language that you're not going to come across in you know normal life and stuff so not necessarily a essential game for like a person studying for the jlpt but for someone who's interested in you know swords and dragons and wars and battles this game is ridiculously accessible um this game is uh, I would say probably more accessible than Triangle Strategy because, yeah, I'd probably have to put it above, 
I love triangle strategies so much though. I, I would probably put triangle strategies number one personally. Um, but if we put Fire Emblem just a little bit more ahead because of the fact that it has such a variety of language, variety of characters, a variety of voices, um, it doesn't get too boring in terms of the actual gameplay. For me, triangle strategy is super interesting, but it may not be the best for everyone. Fire Emblem though is much more appealing to a large number, I think. So it's a ridiculously cool game. Uh, so you get to have some fun hacking and slashing as you're playing through the game, um, there's constantly voiced dialogue happening as you're you know, playing throughout the battle. Not only that, but um, you can actually go and have a look at a log of all of the dialogue that happens while you're playing as well. So all of the, the, the voice that happens as you're cutting all of your enemies down, you can actually go to the menu and have a look at all of those lines and replay it if you miss something. And the main story as well has an entire log as well with replayable audio. So incredibly good game. Okay, and the next game we have is uh, Crayon Shinchan Natsuyasumi. So this game is kind of a rebooting of the Boku no Natsuyasumi series, which is a really cool series for learning Japanese because it's based in real life, right? You go to the countryside, the Inaka um, in Japan, and you kind of meet up with family and you spend you know your summer at your family's house and so it has a whole bunch of real life vocabulary that you can see you know items in your house items in the neighborhood kind of it's a very useful game for learning Japanese because it's based in the real world. This game, however, is a little bit more in the fantasy because it's based on this anime character, Crayon Shinchan. It has things like dinosaurs and stuff, but overall, incredibly good game. Now, this game has push to continue for most of the game, it's quite nice. Some parts go without your permission. <laughs> um, it has furigana, which makes it very accessible, and it has voice acting for a decent chunk of the game. Um, there's a whole bunch of items that you can pick up and discover and explore, and then you can read about them. Very, very cool game, really good. I would have to put this as probably excellent for a language learner. Um, it's a very, very good game. I wouldn't put it as a must by because of the fact that you can't like replay the audio but you could put it as a must buy for some people right I and mean, you really could it, it is a really good game it's definitely recommended it's an incredibly 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 good game for helping you learn japanese with i just personally feel like it needs a little bit more voice acting and more normal speaking not anime style speech uh, but more human <laughs> normal style speech for it to be a real must buy it's Definitely a great game. Don't let excellent um, make you feel like it's not great. Any of the games that are in an S or an A tier are pretty much highly recommended from me. Um, it's just it's not necessarily a must buy tier, right? S tier, god tier type game, but definitely a really good one. Okay, so what do we have next? Oh, the next game we have is Akiba's Trip. <laughs> so this game right here um, is kind of an otaku game, kind of a geeky game. Um, it's set in the kind of paradise for geeks in Japan where kind of the mecca where they sell all the anime and the body pillows and stuff like that um Akihabara it's set in this place and you're one of these kind of otaku guys and it's it's kind of a visual novel but it's also kind of um roaming around a kind of um Akihabara place like a virtual tour is how they actually kind of sell it uh and you kind of you defeat enemies by stripping them <laughs> and that's kind of where the where the play on words is right Akiba's trip strip Akiba's trip <laughs> um, but this game is actually relatively interesting for a, a language learner um, it does actually have dual language Japanese and English it has a log so you can have a look at all of the language that you've covered um, as you play the game it has a ton of voice acting so it's actually pretty good um, you can take the language at your own speed and things so for that um, it actually has to be um, almost similar ranking as Crayon Shinchan um, I won't put it as a must buy because it's not as good um, and it's not necessarily the most amazing game it's fine if that's your cup of tea it's quite funny um, it's quite humorous it's silly it's very pervy uh, it's very much the kind of great teacher Onizuka level of pervy so uh, it may not necessarily be uh, fitting everyone's palate <laughs> um, but you know if, if you like a good laugh and a silly silly pervy laugh then it may be a nice interesting game um, and it is set in Japan so you know it has some, <laughs> some locations that you can be like oh I'm in Japan but the graphics aren't necessarily amazing or anything it was a PSP game I believe but this game is available on Switch 
quite expensive though. It is about 50 bucks on Switch, so <laughs> it's a bit much. Now, personally, um, it should be near A, B. I might put it down to a B tier, just because personally it's not something I'm like crazy about. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a absolutely amazing game. Uh, I want to kind of keep the A's for the games that I really do think are really good, but it could be um, an A tier game. It could, okay? Um, it's just not necessarily my cup of tea. Maybe when I was younger, a little bit more pervy, maybe it would have been better, but. <laughs> God, the next game, however. Oh my God. So here is the actual Fire Emblem game on the strategy RPG game that the Warriors game that we previously saw is based off of. And this is ridiculous. It's exactly the same um, as the Warriors game. This has to be a, a must buy in terms of language learning. This game is incredible. Um, so there's kind of three stories that you can take throughout the game and you can kind of pick whether you want to go blue, yellow or red, right? And they're kind of different branching storylines and it's super interesting. It's all voice acted. It's a strategy RPG, so it's very chill and fun. And it's kind of fun to kind of think about strategy and things. And, and then also, you know, it's all completely voice acted incredibly interesting story incredibly interesting characters uh although the blue lions the blue group is definitely i think probably the most interesting of the stories um it really is an awesome game and you know that's it's so amazing that they created another game based on that same universe and characters and everything so those two games are obviously going to be absolutely incredible for a language learner because of the fact that it has that language log with replayable audio voiced dialogue huge variety of characters um those are absolutely uh, must buy games Games. Um, it is a fantasy game, so it is going to be difficult because it has that kind of, you know, medieval language, uh, which we seem to be seeing a lot of at the beginning of this video. Um, but it is a really good game and it's incredibly accessible. And that's what these three games have going for them right now. They are so accessible. If you're a language learner, any of these games, you can just listen, play, and then if you want to redo, re-listen, you can replay at any time. Really good stuff. Okay, what do we have next? Oh, this is an interesting game. Um, I believe this game is called Megaton Musashi, and this was actually created from level five. So this is a really cool game, uh, and it, I think it's gone under a lot of people's radar. So this game is kind of like your entry mech game. <laughs> uh, you have kind of these Gundam mech uh, characters that you can control, hack and slash, all these kind of cool dodgy mechanics, very fun gameplay. But then underneath all of that is kind of a entry Gundam story that goes on with, you know, voice acted characters. It has Furigana as well. So it's very accessible. This is a great combination of language because you have push to continue. So you can take things at your own speed. Then you have the Furigana. So it's very easy to read along, but then you have voice acting. So it's really interesting and it's really good for your listening practice. So this game is excellent. Very, very, very good game for learning Japanese with. And it, you could kind of look at it as, you know, my first kind of sci-fi mech game, right? This could help you get into more difficult, um, you know, mech Gundam games in the future um, because of a lot of the language that you're going to be learning. But it's really cool and it's very, very accessible and it is actually made by level five. So it, so it has that kind of level five polish to it. And it's pretty interesting because it has this kind of younger audience main game approach, right? Because it's a level five game. They generally make games like, you know, Nino Kuni and Yokai Watch and kind of a little bit more kid friendly games. The good thing about all those games is they all have Furigana and a lot of them have voice acting. So really cool game. Um, went under a lot of people's radar. Very interesting one. It is on the expensive side though. I believe it's something like Nana Seiyan, um, but it does have a free trial so you can check it out and see if you like it or not. Oh my god, oh, we're getting all the crazy games out at the beginning. So the next game we have here is 13 Sentinels. Damn, that goes right to the top. Uh, that is a must buy game, absolutely incredible. Um, I actually have a review for this game on the channel if you haven't already checked it out. I highly recommend checking that review out. Fantastic game. Um, this game is one of my favorite games ever made. Um, personally, Triangle Strategy and 13 Sentinels are just some of my most favorite things to have been created. And I'm so happy that it's come out on the Switch. It used to be just a PS4 exclusive and now it's on the Switch. This game is kind of your timey wimey it's almost like a visual novel, but it has this beautiful art style, an incredible soundtrack, so it really gets you hype. But all of the language you can actually access really easily with its logs. You also have these interesting kind of uh, 
parts of the game where you actually have your inner dialogue and you think and you can listen to all of that as well. You can even go back and forth in time so you can replay scenes. So any of the dialogue that you've come across, not only can you replay the audio, but you can also relive that scene. So you can come back later, you know, after you've kind of leveled up yourself or whatever, and, and you can kind of relive it all. And the whole game is all based around this timey-wimey jumping. So it's totally like non-immersive breaking to do that, right? To kind of go back and play things. This is an incredibly highly rated game and it makes this Switch one of the most powerful platforms ever. The fact that, you know, we have this lineup already of these must-buy games. Already, um, this is a much stronger start than the Steam tier list that I did. Um, this is incredible. I love 13th Sentinel so much and I highly recommend, in fact, I implore you all <laughs> to buy this game. Um, this game needs to do well. Um, I really want there to be more from VanillaWare Studios. This is such an incredible game. Okay, next we have Snack World. Now, this is kind of a roguelike, randomly generated dungeon crawler. Um, you can create characters and you can go and kind of explore these dungeons with friends. And it's a really fun, cute little game with a lot of personality. It's made by uh, Level 5, the company that we've already seen make Megaton Musashi and a bunch of other games. This game is decent uh, for a language learner because it's quite fun, right? It's fun to play, but it has furigana and push to continue for a lot of the dialogue. So it makes it very accessible. Um, there's no voice acting, however, so it's kind of... Uh, it's a little bit lower on the terms of uh, things that perhaps Megaton Musashi would be because there's so much voice acting. I would probably put it as a great game, although, remember, um, it has furigana, so that makes it really accessible, but so does Miitopia, right? But the problem is Miitopia is not a very interesting game, whereas Snack World is much more interesting, a lot more personality and charm. So this could easily be somewhere between an A and a B tier game, I would say personally. For me, I am going to put it down as a B tier, however, because it is a little bit gameplay heavy. It's not the most interesting story. Um, it's just kind of fun and cute and silly. Um, but it's definitely a fun time and something that's interesting to check out if you just want to, you know, play around, have some fun, do some dungeon crawling, but also, you know, have some Japanese um, immersion and practice and reading practice. It's, it's quite a nice little game and level five does this really well with its kind of, you know, just fun, lighthearted games that kind of, it has you smiling, it has you enjoying yourself. It's not too serious, it's not too heavy, uh, it's just a fun time. Okay, so the next game we have here is Sumire. Oh, nice. So this game isn't necessarily super useful for learning Japanese. It doesn't have any kind of special features like furigana, voice acting, a log. It doesn't have any of that amazing stuff. However, the game itself is just really, really charming. Um, it tells the story of kind of a young girl dealing with a family member passing and kind of what kids go through right they don't realize that it's actually you know passing away and how they deal with it and and you see it all through this perspective of this little girl and it's super adorable she like she talks to flowers and her cat and and i just found myself unable to stop playing when i was playing it it's just so interesting um so it is a nice little thing to get some reading practice now it is going to be difficult to learn with because it doesn't have any of those useful tools to help you but i think the game itself is kind of gripping enough to actually keep you interested and that's something that's really important, right? Because if you're, uh, you know, doing the best you can to, you know, read every sentence, but it's just too heavy or it's just not a very fun game or it's just not very interesting to you, then you, it's going to be more difficult for you to keep it up. So for that reason, I would probably put it as decent um, or okay. Although, but I really like it. <laughs> it's hard to say. Is it better than Live Alive? Yes, it is. But Live Alive has voice acting, so that's pretty good. So maybe it should be around about okay then. Is it better than Miitopia? Well, Miitopia has Furigana, so it's hard to say it's better than that. But the story is a lot more gripping. As far as actual interest, I would probably put it here in the B tier, um, in terms of where I actually like the game. <clears throat> Just know, I think I'm gonna put it there, but just know that I'm putting it there because I think the actual story is quite interesting. Um, it's not too heavy, it's not too long, but it's kind of, it's nice little bits of language that are interesting and beautiful and, and it kind of keeps you going. And so for that reason, I think it deserves a few more points. Um, you could put this down below, you know, CD. I'm going to put it here because I like it. <laughs> um, but Sumida is a pretty fun time. Also, another really good thing is it's very cheap. Um, it's only about 10 bucks. Super cheap, easy game. 
Um, just a nice little bit of uh, adorable reading practice. Okay, next we have, ah, Nino Kuni, oh my god. Um, so this game, a lot of people have been requesting me play um, using my kind of Let's Play vocab series star videos because this game is is incredibly good for, for language learners and it's very accessible, it's fun, it's like a Ghibli uh, game. Um, it has voice acting, it has furigana, um, a lot of it I believe is pushed to continue as well. There are some downsides. Um, it does have a lot of difficult language. Your main character sidekick um, speaks in Osaka Ben constantly, so he's kind of a little bit difficult to understand for a lot of people. So, uh, a lot of things put me at excellent. <clears throat> a lot of people, a lot of things are kind of making me feel like it should be an excellent game, because it has voice acting, it has Furigana, it's it's quite fun, it's 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 an enjoyable world. And you know what? I'm going to keep it there. Um, I think it's better than Megaton Musashi. Um, is it better than Crayon Shinchan? That's a tough one. I'm gonna say it's not better than Crayon Shinchan, um, because Crayon Shinchan is set in a kind of real world. It does have a lot of voice acting. It does have a lot of interesting scenes. It has ex explanations for things, and so does Nino Kuni. They both have Furigana. They both have similar levels of voice acting and non-voice acting. Yeah, so I think that's a good spot um, to put Nino Kuni for sure. Something I very much uh, look forward to checking out with the vocab series, uh, kind of Game Gengo play, let's play type of video. Okay, next we have, ah, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So uh, this game, while it isn't necessarily having any super useful tools, it does have voice acting for a lot of it. Um, and the game is based entirely on the Dragon Ball manga, uh, Dragon Ball Z manga. So it goes from the whole way from, I believe, the Saiyan saga all the way to the very, very end of uh, Dragon Ball Z and even a little bit of Super, I think, with like Beerus and stuff. And um, it's really cool. Uh, me personally, Personally, I actually found the Dragon Ball manga to be a really big motivator to actually, when I was starting out learning Japanese, um, trying to read the manga in Japanese was something that was kind of really rewarding working through that um, manga. So in a similar way, uh, it's very rewarding to kind of relive Dragon Ball that I experienced when I was younger and kind of relive it in Japanese and, um, you know, base all of that understanding on my understanding of Japanese. It's a very rewarding experience when you go through something that you know. Um, now, you might not necessarily know Dragon Ball, I do. Um, it has voice acting and push to continue. That's already really, really good. So, for that reason, um, it's it should be near excellent, right? If you think about it, it has push to continue. Um, it doesn't have Furigana, and all of these excellent games do. So maybe it should be in the great area. Also, in some parts, it does have some Furigana. Not all the time, but sometimes with difficult words. Hmm, voice acting and push to continue with a little bit of Furigana. That's got to be great. That's definitely a great game. I would probably put it around about here as a great game. Um, for me personally, uh, maybe it might be a little bit higher than for you. Maybe you might have it down as decent. But for me, if you can have something that has voice acting and push to continue, that's really, really useful. Because normally with a game like, for example, Final Fantasy VII Remake, if you just have a bunch of Japanese just coming at you really, really quickly, it's super difficult to actually really learn anything or really take anything in. Because you're kind of trying to figure out, whoa, 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 what's going on? Your brain's going so quickly. It gets a little bit overwhelming. However, with a game that you can take at your own pace, then you can get the voice acting. You're like, whoa. But you can slowly get better because you can read the whole thing and go, oh, I see. And then, whoa. And then slowly, slowly, you're training yourself and getting better at listening. For that reason, this is um, a very useful style of game. So, also, it's really fun. It's Dragon Ball, right? So, uh, that's definitely something that I would put there as great. Maybe it shouldn't be better than Akiva's Trip, because Akiva does have a log, but I like it more, so I think I'll put it a bit higher. <laughs> okay, next we have, now, here we have Pokemon Violet and Scarlet. Now, this game hasn't come out yet. Now, there's a reason why it's here on this list. I'm including Pokemon Arceus with this um, slot as well. And the reason why it's just going to be the Scarlet and Violet and Arceus game is because it's a little bit different than normal Pokemon games. Normal Pokemon games don't have Furigana. Most or old, older Pokemon games, some of the newer ones like Let's Go Pikachu and everything, they have a choice between reading in Kana or reading in Kanji. And that's it you don't get Furigana. So it's really not great. 
But these games, um, the Arceus game that was released um, on the Switch, and here the new games that are coming out with Violet and Scarlet, they do have Furigana and Kanji, which is perfect. Yes, finally. I so hope this is just the standard now for the rest of the Pokemon series going forward, because it's perfect. Um, this is what Pokemon has always needed for Digana. Now, the reason why Arceus um, isn't the front game for the cover is because Arceus is a bit difficult. <laughs> I played through the whole thing um, on stream um, in the Discord, and I would put Arceus down here, right? Kind of decent or okay. The reason why is because it uses a lot of archaic language. A lot. <laughs> like, a lot. Um, it has some of the colors um, when you like choose like your hat and your eyes and everything and all the colors for all of your you know like um, accessories. The the kanji they use, some Japanese people don't even know how to read them. I actually had some Japanese people check and they're like, what? <laughs> um, so it's very ancient because the game is set in kind of ancient days. Whereas the newer ones, Violet and um, Scarlet, that's not going to have that problem at all. It's a mainline Pokemon game, so it's going to be absolutely incredible. For that reason, um, I would put Pokemon up at excellent to great, right? Um, for me, it needs to be better than uh, the Snack Worlds and the Sumides and the Super Mario Odyssey because it's Pokemon, right? Pokemon is such an interesting game for learning Japanese with because you have the main story, which is quite interesting, uh, and it's kind of fun and cute and charming. But then you also catch Pokemon, and as you catch Pokemon, you get more reading practice because you can read the Pokedex, which is a really fun kind of way of um, coming across new language. I really like those kind of features. So for me, I would put um, at least Violet and um, Scarlet here, probably around excellent to, to great, right? Somewhere between A and B tier, I would put Pokemon. It could be at the very top of great. Hmm. Yeah, maybe the very top of great. Um, because these all these games have voice acting. Pokemon, unfortunately, doesn't. Um, but it does have kind of short bursts of language, which is quite nice, right? That makes it very accessible. Um, perhaps the Megaton Musashi might be a little bit more longer. Same with Nino Kuni, it might actually be longer sentences. Whereas Pokemon might be a little bit more accessible. They also have spacing um, in the text itself, which makes it easier to read. You know what? I'm going to put Pokemon up at excellent, especially the new one, right? Scarlet and um, Violet. Those are definitely going to be um, something that I would put as an A to B tier. Uh, definitely great stuff. Now, the other Pokemon games are a little bit later on in this video. Um, but next we have, oh, buddy, Mission Bond, yes, this game is freaking awesome, man. I have wanted more games like this for so long. So for me personally, I totally understand that the visual novel genre uh, is probably just factually the greatest genre to learn Japanese with, right? It's a novel, but it's visual. It's a visual novel, right? The problem is, is that visual novels tend to be on the kind of pervy side. Um, and look, I, I get it. Like, it can be funny. I, 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 I'm okay with pervy stuff when it's humor. But when that's actually the selling point, <laughs> it's a little bit too much for me. And a lot of the pervy visual novel games, I just can't buy. I just can't get into. I'm just like, uh, maybe I'm too old for it. Maybe it's just not for me. I totally get that it's for a lot of people. A lot of people love visual novels and look, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But just personally, um, I don't really like that kind of, you know, everything is a high school girl trope and everything is all really exaggerated and stuff. Not really my thing. However, Buddy Mission Bond breaks all of that. I've wanted there to be more manga. Imagine if you could read a manga, right? A very nice, visual, interesting manga and interesting characters, interesting world, a manga book that's actually worth reading by itself. Well, imagine if something like that was created, but in a visual novel style. So you had all the voice acting and all of the logs and all of the useful features, but in a more manga-ish game. This is that game. This is kind of a manga come to life in visual novel form, and it's absolutely incredible. It's like a detective game where you kind of solve mysteries and, you know, 
stop thieves from stealing stuff. Um, but it's got really, really good voice acting. It's very enjoyable, very interesting, huge variety of characters. This game, Buddy Mission Bond, has to be a must buy. It absolutely has to be. And in fact, because it has more useful language than perhaps, um, you know, the fantasy realms, I could potentially put it at the very top of the list. Um, because 13 Sentinels is incredible. Um, oh, oh, I might put it below 13 Sentinels. <laughs> I love 13 Sentinels so much. Um, but it is a really good game, Buddy Mission Bond. Absolutely fantastic for learning Japanese with. Oh, and another thing that makes Buddy Mission Bond really good is sometimes it actually has Furigana. Oh, maybe I should put it beyond before. Maybe I should put it as number one. It does sometimes have Furigana, and that's kind of the royal flush, right? You have Furigana voice acting and logs with replayable audio, and it's visually stimulating uh, and actually an interesting, fun game with fantastic music. Uh, yeah, I'd say these deserve to be at the top two right now. Uh, Fire Emblem deserves to be uh, in kind of third place, uh, and Triangle Strategy deserves to be kind of in fourth, fifth place. Um, but yeah, Okay, we're getting some really good games so far. What do we have next? Oh, there we go. Um, here is the other Pokemon games. So here we have Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Now, this game is covering all of the other Pokemon games. All of them. So Brilliant Diamond and whatever the Pearl one was called and all of those other games, um, Sword and Shield, they're all under this game banner right here. Um, they're all, for the Nintendo Switch, all of those games, um, they have the option of having just Kana only or having Kanji. Um, so you can choose whether you want to practice reading just Kana or challenge yourself with Kanji. And they're all very similar, right? It's Pokemon. Um, but just the only downside is these Pokemon games don't have Furigana. So they can't be as good as the other ones. They absolutely cannot. Um, because it just makes it more difficult when, you know, you don't have voice acting and you don't have Furigana. It makes it very di difficult to look up that language. So it definitely has to be at the top of great. Um, I would put it ahead of Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, Super Mario Odyssey is really good because it has Furigana, but Pikachu, Pokemon, man, it is nice. So I would probably put that as the top of great. Uh, all, most of the Pokemon games are great, right? They're really great for learning Japanese with, but they're just not excellent because they don't have that Furigana. And that's what makes the Violet and uh, Scarlet really, really good. Okay, the next game we have is, ah, a new game, Digimon Survive. So this is a pretty interesting game, Digimon Survive. This is kind of like a visual novel that it meets a strategy RPG. Now, it's mostly on the visual novel side of things, but it does have some elements of strategy RPG, which is nice. It makes it a little bit more interesting than a normal visual novel. Um, it's set in the Digimon universe. It has voice acting and it has a backlog with replayable audio as well. So this is a really good game. Um, visual novels, as you may are already kind of grasping, are, are really good games to learn Japanese with, particularly because of the fact that they normally have logs and replayable audio and things, right? But this is Digimon, <laughs> so it's very unexpected. Um, for that reason, it needs to be an excellent game for learning Japanese with, because it has a log, it has voice acting, so you can replay and you can just learn, 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 learn. Um, Realistically, it probably needs to be at the top of the excellent games um, because it is better than most of these other games because it has that log. The downside is it is pretty much just a visual novel game. It does have strategy elements to it, but it is mostly just a visual novel game and not necessarily the most in, in, in enticing and enthralling like Bond, for example. Um, I, no, I don't know if I'd necessarily put it as a must buy. I don't feel as strong and passionate about it that, that I, than I do 13 Sentinels, for example, and, and you know, anything else that else there at the must buy but it's definitely a great game um, for learning Japanese with realistically you know if you find a visual novel you're interested in that has voice acting and replayable audio then that's going to be great for you because it makes it really easy to look things up uh, this game is pretty adorable it's it's nice it's kind of the Digimon and you should you should expect to see more uh, Digimon footage in the Game Genko videos in the future um, thanks to this game coming out it's quite interesting 
Next we have, ah, okay. So the Xenoblade Trilogy. Now this is a tough one. This is a very, very tough one. This is the closest to a kind of Final Fantasy VII remake game on the Switch. And what I mean by that is that it's very much like a movie, okay? The cutscenes fly by um, and you can't really take the language at your own pace. And for that reason, it's very difficult to rank this as an incredibly good game for learning Japanese with. That being said though, it is a really awesome game. It has a lot of voice acting. Um, it's very interesting and there's huge, huge expanding worlds. You, in these three, three trilogy games, you could easily spend like a thousand hours. <laughs> like that's, that's a lot of gaming to be had here and a lot of it being voice acted, a lot of it being very interesting but it's just not very accessible for a language learner. I would say it's definitely on the, the difficult end of things. Um, in some of the Xenoblades, you can actually pause when the cutscenes are playing and you can still read underneath, but uh, it's not necessarily, I don't know if it's guaranteed for all three to be able to do that. So it's kind of a tough one. I would put it down here as okay, and I would probably put it Mm, underneath <laughs> uh, just because of the fact that it is like a movie whereas live alive you can take it your own pace which makes it much more accessible that being said though it's still a really interesting game really cool game it's very very cool i really love the xenoblade um well i guess we have a trilogy now but i really do love xenoblade but Am I going to recommend it saying it's an essential game? Not really for learning Japanese, but it is if you want to get a whole bunch of listening practice. <gasps> One thing I just remembered, they have replayable cutscenes. Ah, ooh, I think it just made a grade up. <laughs> because if you can replay the cutscenes, and I remember that number two definitely has that feature. I'm not sure about one and three, but two definitely does. Um, you can replay the cutscenes once you unlock them. That's awesome, because then you can just keep, you know, kind of like watching it again. Yeah, I'd put it up probably here decent. That's pretty interesting. It's a cool game. It could be anywhere between here or there, but it's definitely, you know, fun time. The next game we have is, ah, Kirby. Uh, I forgot what the English name for this game is, but it's kind of the near Automata Kirby, right? The, as we can see, the ruins in the background. Um, it's a really cool Kirby game. Uh, I actually made a video on this as well, if you want to check that out. Lots of fun. Um, this game is cool because it does have furigana, um, it makes it quite accessible to just kind of play around, so it's very much on the same point as Super Mario Odyssey, right? It's the same kind of experience. Um, one thing about Kirby, instead of getting like level descriptions like you get in Super Mario, uh, instead of that you get kind of enemy descriptions at the end of stages you unlock little token guys, little medals, and it's kind of like collecting Pokemon. So for that reason I would have to put it here. Um, next to Super Mario Odyssey, Kirby is a fun time. Ah, the next game we have, it's kind of like a Tetris game, but with kanji. This is a really weird game, it's called Tetris. Uh, <laughs> weird name. Uh, it's like Tetris, but with G, so Tetris. <laughs> uh, this is a super cheap game, it's like 500 yen, um, but I put it on the list because it's all about creating kanji, which is kind of interesting. So instead of Tetris blocks, you have radicals of kanji and you need to put them together to create kanji. And then it kind of gets recognized as, you know, like the Tetris where you fit in the shape. Same thing, but you're fitting in the radicals to create kanji. It's an interesting premise. It's kind of fun little whatever for, you know, a couple of minutes or whatever, if you want to just mess around with some kanji. Uh, I, I really wanted to have it in this video but then at the same time, I can't necessarily recommend it as a as a learning video. So it's definitely going to go at the bottom of the list, but it's just kind of interesting. You know, hey, if you didn't know, now you know there is a Tetris game made out of the kanji. <laughs> Next, we have ah Persona 4 Ultimate. Uh, it's kind of the fighting game for Persona series. This is an interesting one. Um, this game actually has a full fledged story mode, just like a Persona game does. And you have kind of just like a Persona game, right? You have the character portrait at the bottom and you have the, the voice acted text that happens. It even has logs as well. Uh, one thing that I noticed though, is that it doesn't have replayable audio logs. So you can, you know, you have a cool fighting game with a bunch of voice acting, huge story mode, and you can press to take it at your own pace. Um, so that's really good. And so for that, it needs to be um, at the kind of decent range however it doesn't have replayable audio so it's very hard to put it up um you know up 
excellent. It makes it quite difficult. But it is tricky because it's similar to Dragon Ball, right? You can take it at your own pace and it has voice acting. It has a log, but because it doesn't have replayable audio, it doesn't necessarily make it all that useful to have a log. Um, mm, yeah, I think it may be at the end of the greats, I would say, is probably a, a decent place to put this game. It's an interesting one, right? Uh, it's, a, I think, our first fighting game um, on the list. Um, and it does have a full-fledged story mode with voice acting and that you can take it at your own speed. So that's really useful. Um, but just not necessarily something I'd put up much higher. Okay, so next we have Dragon Quest XI. Yes, this game is probably one of the, the greatest games ever uh, for learning Japanese. It really is great. Um, it's tricky though. It's really interesting. Um, I've always kind of put it in my top 10 when in my mind. Um, this game is incredible. Uh, it's Dragon Quest, so it's fun. Uh, it's very colorful and, and beautiful and an enjoyable, pleasant world to, to explore and, you know, uh, be in. Uh, it has really interesting language where it has furigana, right? It has voice acting and you can take it at your own pace. Even in the cutscenes, right? The cutscenes just kind of keep playing and you can actually press to continue at your own pace. It has summaries, so when you go away from the game for a while, you get kind of a written summary of what's happened, which is really nice to kind of uh, give you a little bit of an update and reading practice that also has Furigana. It's a really, really nice, really nice game um, for learning Japanese with, and it's a game that I could easily recommend uh, to kind of pretty much anyone if they want to learn Japanese, especially if you're interested in like Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy, which is a huge genre. So it must be somewhere here between S and A. Now this is tough for me because it's really, it has to be near the top of A if it was going to be an A. It has Furigana voice acting and take it your own pace. That's almost perfect. Sometimes you don't even need to replay the audio and that's the only main thing that the must buys have over it so but it doesn't have that replayable audio and i personally really like that i'd have to put it at the top of excellent or put it in the must buys and that's a really tough one for me right now i feel like it deserves 100 percent to be at the top of the excellence does it deserve to be a must buy mm, this is a really tough call it does have a free demo so you can check it out whenever you want um so definitely definitely good oh i feel like japanese quest is gonna kill me if i don't put it as a must buy <laughs> it should it, it probably should be at the must buy but i'm gonna put it at the bottom and the reason why is because it doesn't have a log like all of the other must buys do for replayable audio However, it deserves to be at the top of the list. It does deserve to be in the kind of top 10. Um, so I think it does deserve to be up there as a must buy. Uh, but just just know that it, it could be the top of the excellence. But Japanese Quest is going to kill me. <laughs> so no, nah, that's not why I did it. But no, I think I think this is a good spot. Yeah, the bottom of the must buys. It's a really, really good game. It's, it, it's very fun. It's very enjoyable. And it is super accessible for a language learner. So definitely something I'd put up there. The next game we have is, ah, Star Ocean First Departure. So this is an interesting one. It has a very nice kind of RPG world where you kind of explore space and things like that. Uh, it does have voice acting and it does have push to continue so you can take it at your own pace. It doesn't have any logs or any visual novel type stuff, um, but uh, it is really, really good. Um, I would have to put it as an excellent game to play because it has voice acting and push to continue. It makes it very accessible for a language learner because you can just take it at your own pace, listen. It doesn't have Furigana, um, so perhaps it should be underneath the Furigana games that have voice acting as well. It is a really, really good one though. Um, and I think if it had a log or Furigana, I could put it at higher than these other games. Um, but because it doesn't, I think I need to put it here um, ahead of Pokemon Violet um, and Scarlet and uh, Violet, but not um, beyond any of the other ones that have voice acting. Although they don't always have voice acting, so it's a tough one. It really depends, right? If you don't care about Furigana, if you actually just want voice acting without 
any of the furigana in your way, then this could actually be at a much higher game because it's voice acted and you can take it at your own pace. But I'm just going to try and take a kind of general overview for every type of language learner. And for that reason, I'm going to put it here, um, just above the bottom of the excellence. Okay, so the next game we have is Caligula 2. Interesting. So this game is a kind of RPG. It's almost like a budget persona. <laughs> I'm sure some Caligula fans won't like that I said that, but it is kind of like a budget persona, realistically. Persona has a little bit more polish and, 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 and f interesting characters and world than Caligula 2 does, but it, it is, you know, if you're in the market for this kind of game, it's really cool. It's a nice RPG with interesting enough characters and decent enough music. Um, it's not going to be necessarily the top of everything uh, that a Persona game might have, but it's definitely interesting and it does have a lot of voice acting and it has a log. So all of the benefits that I've talked about, it's kind of like a visual novel, but it's just not a visual novel, it's an RPG. So imagine like a Persona game or a Final Fantasy, but having a log, right? Although Persona games do have logs now, but you know, imagine, you know, that kind of RPG with a log. It's definitely something that's good if it tickles your fancy. So where does it go on the list? Interesting. Well, it has a log with voice acting, so it's at least a great. It is quite interesting. It does have a lot of different voice actors. It is very accessible. So it should be perhaps at the top of the grades. Does it deserve to be an excellent? Well, personally, I would say the story is a little bit convoluted and difficult. So I wouldn't put it above any of those excellents. Although perhaps it could be above um, Pokemon, maybe Star Ocean. Yeah, it's a tough one. It should be good because it has a log and it has voice acting, right? So it should tick those boxes. But personally, it just doesn't really gel well um, with me and it's just not as interesting as other games are for me personally. So perhaps I would put it at the bottom of the excellence. It has a log. It can't be below that realistically right i'd be being unfair to the game it's just not my cup of tea personally but really really good game right if if this is your kind of thing then it's a great game for you to learn japanese with um very very interesting the next game we have is ah Pokemon DX, cute little Pokemon DX. Uh, so these are kind of uh, dungeon explorer games with Pokemon kind of uh, turn-based RPGs, but uh, strategy-ish type games. Um, and you play as Pokemon and Pokemon talk with each other. This is actually the first Pokemon game that has Furigana. Um, before this game, there were no Pokemon full-fledged Pokemon games that have Furigana. This was actually the first one. Uh, this is a really early game on the Nintendo Switch. So this is an adorable little game uh, that's just a fun little time to have uh, to help you learn some Japanese and have fun. I would probably put it around this point near Sumide, uh, near Dragon Ball, right? It's a very, very cute time. And I think maybe above Sumide because of the fact that it does have Furigana. So it's very, very accessible and it's a cute time. So this is an interesting game for learning Japanese. Next we, ah, we have Zelda, a uh, Skyward Sword. So, oh my God. So this is really interesting because unfortunately, um, spoiler alert, but um, Breath of the Wild wasn't that great of a game for learning Japanese with. Um, there wasn't, because of the, the design of Breath of the Wild, it was an open world game where you explore the world and collect things and, and it was really hyper focused on that gameplay rather than a single root narrative right the clear narrative like the older zelda games have zelda used to be one of the highest recommended games for learning japanese with when i started learning japanese it was like everyone said pokemon and zelda like that was the games that you should use and like ace attorney right when back when the ds right before the 3ds the ds right all of those zelda games were always super highly recommended now, unfortunately, um, I can't say that it's going to be a must-buy like it used to be recommended back in the day. Um, Zelda, um, here, the, the Skyward Sword, it has Furigana, so that's really good. That's one thing Zelda games have, Furigana. Um, almost every Zelda game has Furigana, so it's a really, really good one for that. There's no voice acting, though, 
Um, uh, it's very gameplay heavy, but there is a bunch of, you know, items and descriptions and there is a story. So it definitely should be up here with, you know, Super Mario and stuff like that. I would probably put it around here, uh, less than Super Mario, less than Kirby, just because it is a little bit more gameplay. Ah, uh, it's very similar. There, I think these this trilogy here are very similar packages that you're going to be getting, right? Gameplay with a little bit of Fudigana um, while you're playing. It's it's a nice little tidbit of uh, language. Uh, Breath of the Wild, spoiler alert, is not on this tier list whatsoever. I haven't put it on this video um, because. I just feel like it's really not that great. <laughs> it's super archaic and difficult language. All of the characters speak very difficult and there's just not that much language, right? So Breath of the Wild, unfortunately, is not going to be on the list. But what is going to be on the list is next. Ah, Monster Hunter Stories 2. This is freaking awesome. So this game is kind of like your entry level game for learning Japanese, for getting into Monster Hunter or almost any kind of RPG. Um, this game has furigana, it also has some voice acting, it does have some cutscenes that you kind of have to watch, um, but it is a very accessible game. It even has furigana while you're playing uh, in the battle menus and things like that and for your descriptions. So it's a really good game for learning. It doesn't have any logs or any amazing features like that, but it is really, really good. I would probably need to put this oh, at the top of the greats. I don't know if I'd call it excellent, but it should definitely be at the top of the greats because of how accessible it is. It does have some voice acting um, and it has Furigana and stuff like that. And some of it you can do push to continue to take it at your own pace. It's a really, really fun time. Ah, next we have Yorkai Watch 1 and 4. <laughs> uh, 2 and 3 were never released on Switch, so just 1 and 4 <laughs> are the ones that are available on Switch. And if you don't know, Yorkai Watch is kind of the modern day Pokemon, right? Pokemon's kind of slid off into terms of coolness for Japanese kids. It's still cool, right? It's still, some kids absolutely love Pokemon, but um, Yorkai Watch definitely kind of overtook Pokemon for a while. And it's really, really charming. Uh, this, this game is made by level five, as you already may have seen. They're really polished uh, game developers that everything they make is just so good quality. Um, this game currently standing um, is better than the Pokemon series for learning Japanese. And the reason why is because it's so visually interesting. It never really gets stale. It's set in real world Japan, which is quite interesting, right? You get to experience kind of being in Japan, but then it's also bursting with personality with these yokai. And yokai are kind of like traditional ghosts and things like that in Japanese uh, media and, and culture. Uh, yokai is where, you know, even normal day objects may have a, a soul inside them and they may come to life, you know, uh, that's where yokai originally originate from. Um, but here it's more of a, a cutie, cartoony type, Pokemon type thing where you have to kind of collect all of these yokai around the world and make friends with them, right? But this game has a ton of dialogue that has furigana that is very, very visually appealing. And I think that's really important for a learner because some of, for example, Pokemon, it can get quite stale. It's just beep, 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 a character just like, oh, 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 oh. and it's just, it's just not necessarily the most stimulating thing. Whereas just have a look at this. It's so visually stimulating, right? And it has a ton of humor, really fun music to kind of keep you into it. Um, it. It really is fun. There's a ton of puns with the language that you can learn. Shout outs to Elro from the Game Gingo Discord. Uh, uh, he, he's been playing this game for a long time and he's always talking about how amazing it is. And it really is. It, it's a, such a charming game um, for learning Japanese with. Uh, the downside is that it's just not as voice acted as I would like it to be. Personally, I wish it just had complete voice acting. So number one and number four, it's a tough one. It has to be an excellent game. It's just immediately it's in the A rank. Um, and it has to be better than Pokemon. It just has to be. Um, it, it could be similar to, to, to Violet and Scarlet. We don't know yet, it hasn't come out. But right now, um, it definitely has to be better. Is it better than Nino Kuni? Well, that's a tough one because 
Nino Kuni has the same level five um, personality and, and vibrancy, and, and it's very nice. Uh, but it has voice acting. Not all the time, though. If you don't care about voice acting, then it's probably not going to be a big issue, and you could probably have Yorkai Watch as an excellent game. Potentially a must buy. Uh, it is really, really charming. I, I kind of want to put it at a must buy, but. I don't think it has the qualities that all of those must-buys have. It, I think it deserves to be in the excellent tier. Where in the excellent tier is a tough one. Um, on paper, it shouldn't take over Digimon because Digimon has logs and voice acting. Um, so perhaps it should be here. This seems to be a comfortable spot to put it, I think, yeah. Uh, really, really fun time, really in, in interesting and exciting. It's a world that's just pleasant to be in right and, and it's, I can't really say that about too many of these games that it just feels good being in the world right um, maybe for example I don't know the Boku no Natsuyasumi type game feels that same way where it just feels good being there um, and so yeah I guess that's a good spot to put it really it's, it's a very very charming game for learning Japanese with and a highly highly recommended game Okay, so we've now reached the halfway point. So we've now covered half of the games, 30 games. Um, so this is what it looks like right now, the first 30 games for this tier list. And now we have 30 more to go. So the next game that we have here is Voice of Cards. Now, this is a really interesting entry. Voice of Cards is a kind of a a world made of cards like in your imagination right everything is a card everything is a card and it has the narration from i believe uh near automata one of the voice actors from that um he's actually narrating the entire story and everything that's happening and the interactions between characters so it's kind of like a storybook where you know the, the narrating voice is telling you what's happening right and because of this there's a lot of descriptive language that you would not see in any other game it has this descriptive language like, you know, standing there in the darkness, there was a rogue with a dagger in his hand looking quite desperately at the woman wanting to stab her, <laughs> right, for example, right? But that kind of descriptive language you wouldn't see in most normal games. This is an excellent game um, for immersing in Japanese. It is going to be difficult because you only listen once to the audio and then that's it. And there's no furigana, no logs, or anything like that. So it is on the difficult end of games. Um, I believe I put it in my must-buy list for the um, PC uh, tier list. <sighs> but I don't think I can do it now. I'm being a little bit more stricter with my list. I'm being very, very clear exactly what it should 100% deserve to be in. And I don't think it's a must buy, but it's a really interesting experience that you're not going to get anywhere else. And if you like Nier Automata, this game is going to capture your heart in some way. If you like that world, if you like that kind of vibe, this is a really interesting game. And it's just really unique there's no other game like this uh, except for the other voice of cards there's two of them um, i've only played the first one but the second one's exactly the same thing so this is a tough call realistically it's at a similar point as dragon ball a voice acted game that you can push to take at your own pace but it doesn't have any special things like logs or furigana and i guess that's where it belongs to be yeah i guess this is where it deserves to be a great game. <laughs> uh, it's not an excellent game for learning Japanese, but it's a great game. Yeah, I think that sounds very, very reasonable. So it is a very interesting one, uh, something I highly recommend you guys check out. Um, I love it. I adore this game. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great game. The next game we have on this list is, oh, this is such an interesting oddball game. This is actually a Yokai Watch game. Uh, as you just saw, Yokai Watch up here in the excellence, right? A very charming and exciting world. Um, this, however, is completely different. It's the same kind of universe, right? Yokai ex exists and everything, but it's kind of based around a school life. And that's actually in the name, 
right? So this game is very different from Yokai Watch, but in some ways it's actually even better than Yokai Watch for learning Japanese with. And the reason why is because it has a ton, absolute ton of voice acting with Furigana and Press to Continue. Not only that, not only that, but it even has unlockable dialogue. So what that means is that like when you progress through the story, and there's a lot of it, like over 100, over 200, over 300 unlockable pieces of dialogue. So as you're kind of exploring the world and you collect something, a little interaction will happen between your characters and they'll talk about it like a joke, right? One of them was like, for example, joking about having a bath with your teacher or something. I don't know, it's like stupid. But that dialogue was recorded and you can replay it at any point you want in the menu. So you have voice acting, you have push to continue, you have replayable dialogue, you even have Pokemon style unlockables. So characters, you actually see breakdowns of characters, monsters, you see breakdowns of the monsters, and you actually have voice acting, which makes it super interesting. All of that personality that you get in like a Yokai watch, well, you're getting that, but you're getting it with voice acting this time. I will say it's not as polished feeling as the Yokai watch games, but it's a really interesting game that I'm immediately sold on. Uh, it's super, super interesting. And you can be sold on it too right now because there's a demo available completely free. So you can check it out if you want and see if it's something that interests you or not. And it's really nice that a lot of these games on this list actually have a demo. So the question begs us, where do we put it on this list? Well, it has to be better than Yokai Watch, right? Because it has everything Yokai Watch has, but more. It is a bit more faster paced than Yokai Watch, I must say, though, because the game kind of just happens really quickly. Mm, I'd put it near there. I really would. Um, I don't know if I can put it above Digimon because of the lack of logs, but it does have replayable audio, it does have unlockable stuff. Yeah, this is a good spot for it. It's a really interesting game um, that makes language really accessible to you, and I highly recommend checking the demo out and deciding for yourself if it's something you're interested in. But it's a really, it really surprised me. This is a really cool game. <laughs> the next game we have is Oshiri Tante. <laughs> um, if you know Japanese uh, culture, you may know, you may have heard of Oshiri Tante. Uh, it's a kind of famous kids book, uh, you know, Oshiri means bum, uh, Tante is detective, so it's kind of detective bum. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bum, a talking bum. <laughs> Uh, and they have a whole bunch of jokes in there, you know, like fart attacks and stuff like that. It's pretty childish and stupid, but it is a really interesting one for language learning. It has a little bit of voice acting. It has furigana. It has push to take it at your own pace. It has a lot of kind of like descriptive language. Because you're a detective, you need to find certain things. And so you need to match the description with what you're looking for, which is really nice because you kind of find the man with a fluffy haircut, right? And so you're like, well, where's Fluffy, right? You're trying to look for uh, the fluffy person. So there's language like that. Maybe that's a bad example, but there's language like that that is 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 nice where it's a kind of a detective game. It's a silly game. It's a really silly game, but it's charming uh, and it may make you smile and it may help you learn some Japanese along the way. So for that reason, it should be somewhere here around great. I wouldn't necessarily put it as excellent, but I think it deserves to be here as a great game. Um, perhaps it's somewhere here. Is it better than Pokemon? <laughs> I can't put it better than Pokemon. Uh, I can't bring myself to do it. Um, I think it should probably be here-ish. I think this is a reasonable place to put it. It's charming, it's interesting, it's fun, it's great. Um, it, it's just not necessarily better than Pokemon or any of these other Furigana games that are really, you know, classic games. Um, but it is a fun little time. Um, it is a little bit expensive, but there is a demo, so you can check it out right now uh, and figure out, you know, if you want. And I think I'm going to go through a recap at the end of this video, which games have demos and which ones don't, just so you guys know. But actually, a lot of these games have demos. The next game on this list is Bravely Default 
2. Ah, now, this is a cool one. I'm really looking forward to this game. Um, I, I was really interested in Bravely Default 1 back on the 3DS, but I never got a chance to play it. So when Bravely Default 2 came out on the Switch, it was super, super hype, and it's also now on PC and all kinds of stuff. But Bravely Default 2 is cool. It has your kind of traditional Final Fantasy, really traditional Final Fantasy style game with, you know, the crystals and, and you know, the, the magic and the knights and everything like that. It does have voice acting and it does have push to continue. So you can take it at your own pace and the dialogue, you can just listen, read, look it all up and then continue to the next line. So that's really good. And for that reason, it's at the same spot as Dragon Ball. However, um, does it deserve to go higher than that? It does have really difficult language because it is set in the fantasy world. It has lots of kings and queens and royalty and dukes and duchesses and things like that. So it is difficult. Um, in terms of all of these games, they're really accessible, friendly and short and nice. So it must be somewhere around here. And I would say that, uh, yeah, it has to be somewhere around here. You know, I think I should probably put Dragon Ball above um, voice of cards just because it's really accessible and um, it often has like replayable stuff so I'd say Dragon Ball is a little bit higher. Yeah I think this is a good spot right here for Bravely Default 2. It, it is a great game um, it, you know being able to have voice acting that you can take at your own pace is always going to be a great thing. Um, it just doesn't really have anything to push it any higher than that in terms of the rating. Okay, so the next game we have is, ah, the Ace Attorney game. So here we have Ace Attorney, uh, the kind of trilogy, as well as the Great Ace Attorney, which is more kind of Samurai Meiji era um, Great Ace Attorney games. They're all fantastic. Um, they're really good for the precise reason because it's interactive language. So far, even if you don't understand what's going on with most of the games that we've covered, you can still progress through the story. However, this game is a little bit different. This game relies on you understanding the nuances of uh, perhaps, you know, in, in, a, in a law sense, right? You're on the stand and you're with your judges and lawyers and you need to be able to see the holes in someone's story. You need to be able to see where the contradictions are. You need to be able to see where they're lying. And those things are going to allow you to then keep progressing the game. So what that means is, is that this game is actually very unique in the sense that you need to understand in order to progress. And so that does put a little bit of a pressure on you, right? Because it is quite challenging. And unfortunately, this game doesn't have Furigana, doesn't have voice acting, doesn't have a log. So that makes it not great, <laughs> unfortunately. It is actually one of the highest recommended games for learning Japanese with. Um, I've seen it all over the place on the internet. Um, before Game Gengo existed, this was one of the games that was always really recommended. But it's tough. It's really tough. It's pretty much the equivalent of giving you a book and saying, read this, and if you don't understand, you can't continue. <laughs> That's tough, okay? Um, so my, uh, I had to put it in the video, right? It is, it is a very unique and special experience and some people are gonna swear by it. But when you really think about it, right? You really look at it. It doesn't have anything that the must buys have, none of that. It doesn't have anything that the excellent games have, none of that. And it doesn't have most of what any of the great games have. So realistically, I should be putting it as a decent game, right? Um, and maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should put it as the, the best decent game for learning Japanese <laughs> because it's really hard to recommend it more than the other games because the other games are more accessible. However, it does have the benefits of the fact that it needs you to understand. So that does put a little bit of kind of strength if you think about it, because the game requires you to understand. So that's gonna make you more stimulated and also more you know, focused on what you're reading because you need to understand. It does have a lot of personality and it's really fun. It's just tough. It's really tough. I wish this game had voice acting, furigana, or a log. Any of these things would have made it an incredible game. If it had all three, it would have been one of the best games. 
But because it doesn't have any of those things, it's very difficult for me to put it as a great game. Although it is a great game, <laughs> just not necessarily for language learners. Now, the next game on this list is uh, Disgaea 6. I think that's how you say it. Disgaea, Disgaea, I'm not sure. Um, but Disgaea 6 is craziness. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely crazy. It's a strategy RPG that's often kind of told from the perspective of chaos and demons and things like that. Um, this game has one thing that the other Disgaea games don't have, and that's a log. So you can actually replay, uh, you know, the audio and things like that. And it does have a lot of voice acting. So this is a really interesting one. It is chaos, absolute chaos. And because of that, it can make it quite difficult to understand what's going on. Um, it is all over the place, but it is pretty cool how it has this voice acting and log. So for that reason, it needs to be a great game. Although I wouldn't put it as an excellent game just because um, there are some things holding it back. It is quite chaotic. I would probably put it here. I like that, right? Um, I would play it more than any of the games below it if I felt like learning Japanese, but maybe not more than the games above it, right? So I think this is a good place for it. Um, if you like Disgaea, though, or Disgaea, then great, right? It's a really, this is a really good game for you to learn Japanese with. Um, number six, not number five or anything. Number six. Um, however, personally, I'm just not a huge fan of the characters and stuff like that. But it is a lot of comedy. It's really fun, and it has a lot of learning um, to have. So it's quite an interesting one. Okay, so the next game we have is Monarch. Now, this is an interesting one. Monarch actually has a free demo if you want to check it out. And this is kind of similar to the previous game that we saw that's kind of like a budget Persona, right? It's not quite as interesting as Persona, um, so it's kind of a budget Persona. But it does have voice acting. Uh, it has quite a lot of voice acting. And it does have logs, so you can replay the audio. So that's another really good thing about this game. So this game has to be at the same point as Caligula right um they're very similar where they feel like budget persona games and i'm very sorry i don't mean to criticize them they're they're, they're very interesting in their own in their own right um but i just think persona does it better right um but look they they have things that you need to make a game really good for learning japanese they have voice acting lots of characters uh, logs with replayable audio and it's kind of interesting the problem with this game, and it's the same problem that I have with Caligula 2, is that the, the story gets really convoluted. So, for example, Monarch deals with things like the human ego and things like that. Uh, it, it gets a little bit philosophical and, and tricky. So it could be something that's really interesting for you. But for me personally, uh, it's just a little bit too... <laughs> up itself <laughs> but it is kind of an interesting game and it definitely has tools that can help you learn japanese with so it's a cool one but just not necessarily my favorite oh the next game we have is a uh, grim grimoire this game is from the same developers of 13 sentinels so one of the games at the very 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 top of the list and it's very similar in the terms of the, the art style is very very beautiful um, the music's okay um, it has lots and lots of voice acting it allows you to replay actually chapters of the story so you at any point you can go back and replay the scene with all of the audio and everything um, it's really really cool lots of voice acting very visually nice to look at um, this game isn't necessarily going to be as good as 13 Sentinels, um, but it is really cool. One potential downside is I don't really like the combat. I don't really like the gameplay too much of it, um, but I do really find the world fascinating and the characters and the art style, and, and it is a really beautiful and interesting game. It's kind of like a storybook, right? That's kind of in the same way where you, you listen to Alice in Wonderland and it's like that kind of uh, same kind of vibes. So it definitely definitely should be a great game. Um, it has voice acting and you can replay the audio, so that's really... I don't think it has a log, but you can go back and replay the scene. As well as being able to take it at your own pace with push to continue. So for that reason, it should be higher than all of these games because you can replay the audio. These other games don't allow you to replay the scene as easily as this one does. It could be close to an excellent game, realistically. I'm not sure about it, right? It's, it's a little bit fantasy, it's a little bit tough. 
Uh, it's really interesting. It's a super, super duper interesting one. Is it more accessible and interesting and useful for language learners than uh, these trilogies, Pikachu, Kirby, Super Mario? Well, it has voice acting and you can replay it, but it might not be as interesting. It should be somewhere around here. Mm, this is where it feels like it should be. I'm going to put it at the top of the voice acted games that you can take at your own pace. And the reason why it's at the top of them is because you can replay the scene. Um, so that makes it a little bit better. However, uh, it's like, you know, not one of the greatest games of all time. Um, uh, but it's, it's still a really interesting one. So if you haven't already checked it out, you totally should. It has a free demo available um, and it could be a fun, interesting game for you. But this next game, everyone, please pay attention. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> I love it. So if you remember earlier on in the video, I said how much I love Buddy Mission Bond for being a manga visual novel. Super interesting, super vibrant, um, and, and th that is aces it. Well, this next game, Anonymous Code, is that. But it's kind of, instead of the detective game, it's more like a ghost in the shell uh, kind of uh, future brain hacking type stuff. Super freaking cool. I just discovered this game. It just came out, actually. Um, it has a ton of voice acting. It has logs. You can replay the audio. It's so freaking cool. You can take the language entirely at your own pace, so you can just go through it at your own pace but it's really interesting it actually has just absolutely wonderful art style and just super interesting i love this game i want to play more of this game it's i would put it as a must buy right um it kind of has to be really another really good thing about this game is that it does have a demo um so a lot of these games have demos um so yeah anonymous code is fantastic now where do i put it on the must buy list well I really enjoyed it. It actually had me laughing. I actually may even like it a little bit more than Bond in terms of character design and the more adult themes for it. It's really cool. I love Ghost in the Shell. Um, so, you know, almost a part of me could, you know, put it ahead of B Body Mission Bond. I haven't played enough of it, though, to say that it's the greatest game on this list. <laughs> That's a bit much. Um, but it should be somewhere near here, right? Because I think 13 Sentinels I love, like I could almost put that as the greatest. Um, but it should be here. I think I like it more than Fire Emblem and Triangle Strategy because of the fact that it is kind of fantasy language, which can be very difficult for people. Anonymous Code has a little bit more language set in real life. Super interesting. Um, Ghost in the Shell, it's very mature. Uh, I love that game. That is a game that just immediately jumped on my radar and I think I'm happy to have it here um, in the must-buy list. It's a really interesting one and it has a demo, so definitely check it out and see if you like it. Okay, slowly making our way through all of the games. The next game we have is, ah, Gun Vault. This is an interesting one. So this is kind of like a Mega Man, right? Where you have, uh, you know, side scrolling, hack and slash, shooting, that kind of thing. Timing with the enemy's attacks and everything, which is really, really cool, right? We don't have any kind of Mega Man style game on this list. And this game actually, surprisingly, <laughs> um, as you're playing through the game, the characters actually talk, right? And they talk while you're battling and stuff like that and they talk as you kind of learn new abilities and they describe the abilities but all of that language actually is replayable with a log which is just so unexpected right like how cool is that so this game it has a log and voice acting this it's not a huge story game it's more gameplay right it's like Mega Man but it has a lot more story than Mega Man um, and, you know, the Gun Vault series actually has been quite interesting for a while. It has a lot of voice acting. Um, this recent version has a log. So where should I put it? It's tough. Now, the game is difficult. So that may stop you from actually getting that language that you want to learn, because the game itself is actually quite challenging. But it is really cool. I really like it. From a language learner's perspective though, you do need to get out of the game, like you need to get out of the action to kind of focus on the language. The language can kind of go by as you're, you know, hacking and slashing your way through things. So it, maybe it should be a great game. And I think it's a really cool game. Um, I'm going to put it around the Disgaea 
area right here. I think this is a good spot for it right here. Um, and the reason why here it's in the grate is because it, you know, it has a voice acting and logs, which makes it, it should be really good, but it is a difficult game because you need to, you know, be good with the hacking and slashing. Um, so you might actually end up replaying the stuff over and over again, which I guess isn't bad from a language perspective. Lots of review. Um, super interesting. I want to check out this franchise more. Uh, it's a really interesting one that flew under my radar. Um, it's I, I like the design and everything and the music is awesome. And I actually like it way more than Mega Man in many ways. Uh, the fact that it has language as well just makes it icing on the cake. So if you kind of feel like playing some Mega Man and you want to learn some Japanese at the same time, definitely check out Gunvolt. Oh man, this next game's a juicy. So this game is actually one of the old DS games that was highly recommended way back when I first started learning Japanese. Now it's been re-released on the Switch. Neo, The World Ends With You. Or here, uh, the Japanese title, Shin Subarashiki Kono Sekai. And this is a super cool game, okay? Super cool. Uh, so you go through kind of Japan with a kind of Kingdom Heartsy style, art style, very Nomura style. Um, really nice art style, really nice music, very hip, right? Very cool, cool, cool game. Uh, very interesting characters. And this game has a ton of voice acting. It has logs. It has super interesting ways that the language appears on the screen. Very like manga-esque. Really cool stuff. I love the design of this game. I think it's a superb game. Really interesting. Really, really nice. This is a super, super underrated game that not many people um, at least talk about. I feel like it's a really underappreciated game. This game has to be better than a great game because it has voice acting and it has logs. It has replayable audio and it's super stylish and cool. Uh, it, it almost has enough to put it as a must buy. Almost. Um, oh damn, yeah, it almost has enough to put it as a must buy. Oh damn, I think I'm gonna have to put it as a must buy, and I'm gonna put it um, just before Dragon Quest XI because the fact that it has a log and, you know, voice acting and everything like that. It's not completely voice acted, and for that reason, you know, I can't put it ahead of the other games that actually are completely voice acted, but it is really, really uh, interesting. A lot of it is voice acted, a lot of it is really, really cool. So this is a fantastic game, super cool stuff. Definitely worth checking out, and there's a demo, so you can check it out right now. Okay, so the next game we have is uh, Fire Emblem Encore. Uh, so this is an interesting game. It's very colorful and fun and friendly. Um, it's a kind of collaboration of Fire Emblem and Shimigami Tensei and like Japanese idol culture. <laughs> it's a really weird mix, um, but it's it's kind of fun. It's it's very kind of Final Fantasy X-2, right? Where it's just kind of fun, silly, um, and very vibrant and colorful. Um, this game actually has quite a lot of voice acting in it and it has a lot of these characters that will appear from like Fire Emblem and stuff that may be some of your favorite characters but they'll appear in this real world setting which is really odd. Um, the game has a bunch of um, Japanese language that is pushed to text so you can listen to the audio and then push to continue um, so you can take things at your own pace. For that reason alone I would put it here and probably above or around this area. Um, really, right now, these games are, are pretty similar in the way that they are all um, Japanese audio, so you can listen to the Japanese voices, but you can take it at your own speed. And the next game on the list is very, very, very similar, uh, Catherine. So Catherine, oh my god, uh, this, is, this is a classic. Uh, so the game is kind of like looking at the inside of a man, not a particularly nice guy, but a guy who kind of cheats and, and has women problems and has all these anxieties and issues and, and, and he's, he gets into all these really bad situations. Um, and it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a very adult game, right? It, it deals with, you know, situations in, in a funny way, but of, you know, adultery and things like that and just kind of, you know, suspicious situations and very odd pervy situations but it's hilarious and it's it's very adult right normally japan and japanese games and japanese media and when they get pervy they get pervy in a kind of really weird setting like you're in a high school <laughs> 
What? But this game is based around adults, so you don't have to feel weird or anything. It's not a weird pervy game. It's just more of an adult pervy game. It's, it's, it's very much kind of like just a fun, silly game with just some stupid stuff that will make you go, <laughs> just make you laugh a bit. Um, I remember when I first saw this on the PlayStation 3, I was so blown away by it, like just... I'd never seen a game, I don't think there ever really has been a game quite like this that kind of uh, touches on these uh, certain topics and, and things and it's it's a very it's a very sexy game, it's a very cool game though, it's really cool and most of the game is quite accessible from the language perspective. It has cutscenes, yes, however you can pause and in fact when you press pause it says pause, <laughs> um, but you can take it at your own pace. Also, the game itself you can push to continue, and the gameplay is kind of this weird puzzle thing where you have to climb a box and you have to pull out and push in and climb up, and it's really weird. Um, good news, though, is that if you're not really interested in the puzzle gameplay, you can just press, I think it's like R1 or something, and it just auto-plays for you, <laughs> which is great. So you can just focus on the story if you want. This is another really cool game, and I'd have to put it at the same point as um, the last game. Very, very similar in terms that it is a game that has a lot of voice acting, and you can take it at your own pace. The next game on this list is Valkyria Chronicles 1 and 4. So this game is very, very similar to the last ones we just saw again. Um, this is kind of a military strategy game that has a duck and cover ammunition aiming type system um, but it is still a strategy RPG take turns with the enemy um, and be strategic put your position your, your troops in the right position and everything it's a really I, I love this game actually it's kind of like a military chess I really enjoy these games and they have a ton of Japanese voice acting a ton of interesting cutscenes, a ton of characters, um, it really is awesome stuff. Um, you can take this language at your own pace, so you can push to continue, and you can also even replay some of the scenes. So you can, the way the game works is that as you progress through the story, you kind of unlock pages in this storybook. And you can go back at any time and reload that page and reload that chapter, which means you can replay missions, you can rewatch cutscenes. Um, so it's a very, very accessible game. And in fact, it would have to be more accessible than all of these other similar games on this line that have Japanese voice acting that you can take at your own speed. This game, similar to Grimoire, where you can take, um, you can actually replay the cutscenes as well, replay, replay the scenes and replay the chapters. So those two games are very unique in this line um, and really, really cool, really cool game. Okay, so we're getting down to our last two lines of games and the first one we have here is, ah, speak of the devil, Final Fantasy X and X-2. Um, these are kind of bundled together in one game. So this is a tricky one for me because, <sighs> We've got so many excellent games on this list so far. And Final Fantasy X, realistically, isn't an excellent game for learning Japanese. And, and that, I had a really tough time kind of organizing my head around this, but the game is one of my personal favorites and I love it. And the game actually is a very big reason for me and many people wanting to learn Japanese in the first place. Um, this game had a kind of shoddy dub that wasn't really all that good. Uh, cue laugh scene. <laughs> um, but it's a really rewarding game to learn Japanese with and actually see your progress with. The problem with this game is that it's not actually all that accessible. Um, the cutscenes fly by, uh, I think you can press the pause button, but I'm not sure about that. It's not that good for a language learner. It is a great game to kind of reward yourself or to test yourself or to just give you some motivation with your Japanese studies. And the game does have a game script, so you can go on the internet and you can play along with the script, which is makes it really accessible. But the game by itself, just by itself, without you know the game scripts that you can use to help you, just by itself, I would have to put it in the decent to okay range. Because it's actually less accessible than Live Alive. 
Live Alive, you can take at your own pace and, um, you know, with the voice acting. In fact, come to think of it, Live Alive has a lot of similar uh, things that all of these games on this row have. Maybe I've been a bit too harsh on Live Alive. Maybe Live Alive deserves to be maybe higher up. But I'm going to keep it here just for now. But Final Fantasy can't, I can't say that it's better, right? Because it doesn't have, it's very, it's a very difficult game to access in Japanese. It just kind of happens. So just know that I love this game. And in fact, I highly recommend playing it in Japanese. I highly recommend using this as motivation to help you want to play more. But by itself, I have to put it at the bottom of this list um, because the game just kind of flies by and it's not very accessible. However, just use a game script and you can probably push this game up, <laughs> up the list, right? So just keep that in mind. The next game we have here is very, 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 very different. Uh, we have Persona 5 Scramble. Now, this game is amazing. So this game is actually a sequel to Persona 5. So if you haven't played Persona 5, you might not understand the characters and all that kind of connection with the characters. Um, but you can play it as a alone, standalone game. You can, it is possible, um, but it is a sequel, right? The weird thing about this game is right now Persona 5 isn't available on the Switch. Um, so it's really weird that the sequel is on the Switch before the original. Um, but this game, I have to put right at the top. Like seriously, right at the top. It has to be uh, as a must buy game. It has to be. Uh, I probably put it similar. Um, it probably has to be better than Dragon Quest. I put that right at the top. And the reason why, even though it is a sequel and you may miss out on some of the story because you haven't played the original, this game is actually, in a way, I kind of like it a little bit more than Persona 5, um, because this game is actually more of like a hack and slash um, RPG where you, you know, you kill and stuff rather than turn take um, and it's kind of, you know, um, turn based. But it has everything else that the Persona 5 game has voice acting, interesting characters, um, you travel around Japan, it's set in the real Japan, it has um, a log so you can have a look at all of the language that you come across and replay the audio. It's ridiculously good. It has to be a must buy. It's definitely an S tier game. Um, if the original, and the original is coming but it's not out yet, if the original was on uh, the Switch uh, I'd have to put it before this game just because this is a sequel, but this is a really awesome game and highly, highly recommended that you should definitely check out and try yourself. And yes, you can try it yourself because there is a demo available of this game as well. Uh, man, the Nintendo Switch is bringing back demo discs. Like, every, almost every one of these games has a demo. So definitely check out this game. It's definitely worth your time. Super useful and cool for learning Japanese with. The next game we have on the list, ah, okay, so we have AI Somnium and we have the sequel for AI Somnium. So there are two games in the AI Somnium range. This is a really, really cool game and it's right up my alley. This is kind of like a, in a way, it's very similar to um, Animus Code where it's kind of a ghost in the shell, cyber punky detective game. Um, this game does have voice acting and logs and really interesting kind of puzzles and it's really trippy visuals. This game as well, right up to must buy. Absolutely no question, it is right up at must buy. Um, this game is super useful for a Japanese language learner. It is a bit dark, it is a little bit complicated um, in terms of the setting, right? It gets quite in-depth inside the mind and everything but this game is so accessible and so cool where do i rank it against the other games is a bit tricky it has to be more than dragon quest i absolutely love this series it's so cool it's so dark it's so gritty but it's so interesting i love it absolutely love it um oh, this is tough so i think persona 5 should probably be around here, Persona 5 Strikers, because it is a little bit more accessible than the fantasy genre. And I think AI Somnium should be really anywhere from either ahead of Fire Emblem 
or after Fire Emblem. It really could be anywhere here. It really just depends on what kind of person you are, um, whether sci-fi is more difficult than kind of deep fantasy medieval type stuff. It really depends on your personality and your interests. Um, just know that it is definitely a must buy, definitely an incredible experience, um, and definitely worth your time. I really like it, I think it's awesome, so definitely recommended game regardless, but it's in the must buy. Ah, this next game is really interesting. So right here uh, we have, I believe it's called Furaiki? No, sorry, Fudaiki. Uh, and this game is super cool. And this is another really unique game that no other game offers the same experience that this game has. This game is a road trip game. And it actually goes through actual Japan. Not an anime version, not a stylized version. Actual, literal Google images, Google Maps, uh, Japan. And it's a video game, a visual novel, where you go through Japan on a bike and you go touring. And it's such a cool, unique series. Um, it doesn't have as much voice acting as, as, I, as I would like, so it is a difficult game in terms of, you know, learning Japanese with. But it's a really cool experience that I really wanted to have on this list, because I think you guys should definitely check this game out. So here, with your kind of date, you actually go around the Japanese countryside, you visit temples, real locations, there's even DLC to check out different locations around Japan. Uh, if you're missing Japan, if you're wanting to kind of, you know, experience being in Japan, this game is, this would be the perfect VR game if it existed, right? Because you can just imagine just immersing in real Japan countryside, having Japanese dialogue, and it's so cool, and it's just such a nice game. And, like, for example, for me, right, I've, I've been kind of at home for a while, I've, I've been a bit sick and everything, and it just kind of, it really kind of makes me feel like going out, and it's like, it's really nice kind of replacement for that, right? If you're locked indoors for a long time, this freaking pandemic, um, this game kind of allows you to go out on that journey. The main downside to this game is, is that it's not fully voice acted. Um, I don't think it has any kind of logs. It doesn't have Furigana, so it's actually quite a difficult game. You can take it at your own pace, right? You can press the buttons. So for that reason, it has to be better than Final Fantasy. <laughs> um, is it better than Live Alive? I love it. I love it because you can just go around Japan and actually visit actual locations and kind of explore and feel that sense of exploring when you're like in Japan. It's really cool. Um, and it is a visual novel, you know, it does have some voice acting. It's a really cool game. I would have to put this somewhere as okay decent. Um, I'm feeling like maybe I was a little bit too harsh on Live Alive putting it down here at the okay range. And in fact, I'm actually thinking I'm going to graduate it. Um, I think this Furaiki game should be a decent learning experience. It's similar to... Um, this game, right, where it doesn't have voice acting and it's a bit difficult to access, but it's really useful and unique. And for that reason, I'm going to put Live Alive at the top of Decent. I'm going to change Live Alive's spot because it has voice acting, okay? It is really, really cool. And I think maybe I was just a little bit too critical of it because it was just, it was, it's really hard. <laughs> the Japanese area is really difficult, um, but I'm sure the other stories aren't quite as challenging as that. Um, so there we go. I think, uh, yeah, I think that looks good. Um, but man, this Furaiki game is so interesting and it's so cool kind of traveling around Japan. Okay, the next game we have on the list is, ah, Blue Reflection. This is the waifu game. <laughs> um, so this is uh, kind of very, very, if you're into kind of idols or if you like cute girls, whatever, this game is going to be a cool uh, learning experience for you. This game is set around these high school girls that get this kind of magical power. It has a bunch of voice acting. It does have logs. It's it's very pleasant. It's, it's a very kind of interesting, beautiful kind of game to experience. It's pretty cool, right? Um, one thing that I actually really appreciate about this game is that it's not pervy. It's not pervy. It's just cute girls. That's it. And so I'm so relieved. <laughs> it's so nice to not just have cringe-worthy games. Um, so if you just like cute girls and you want to learn some Japanese with cute girls everywhere, then this is a great game for you. Um, it's definitely up there with, you know, 
the visual novel type stuff. In fact, you could almost put this as a must buy, interestingly enough, because it has a whole lot of really accessible language with the logs and everything and the, the audio and it's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a tricky one. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to put this on my must buy list. Oh man, I'm stuck. I'm not sure where to put this game. Is it a must buy? It has logs, it has replayable audio, it's very, very comfy. This is tough. This is really tough. I'm gonna put it here at the front of Excellent because, just because, I personally don't see it as a must buy. Personally. Just, that's just not, it's, for me, it's not something that I go, yes, you must have it. But I can't deny that it has most of the things it needs to be a must buy. So it needs to be up here at the top. Um, it is a very good game and definitely something that is worth checking out. Um, it doesn't have all of the tools that the must buy, well it does. It's not completely 100% voice acted, right? But it has enough. It's very cute. It's very comfy. It's very pleasant. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> um, so yeah, look. I, I like this. I like this a lot and I would put it pretty high up. The next game we have is an interesting one. Um, another one of these DS games that has been kind of revitalized on the Switch. Here we actually have um, Layton's um, Journey, but this time it seems to be um, a Lady Layton. <laughs> this is a really interesting one. Um, this Layton game is, is kind of... Uh, it's like a puzzle solving game. You have these small little puzzles and riddles and mysteries that you need to solve. And, and this is another level five game. If you can't already tell that polish is there with level five, that it's just primo. This is a really beautiful game. Now this game does have a little bit of voice acting in the kind of special cutscenes. You can take it at your own pace and it has Furigana as you can see, that makes it very readable. This um, immediately has to be in the great tier and I would put it s probably at the top of the great tier. Um, it really is awesome. Um, I really like the design. I really like the, the whole presentation. And I think it's a very comfortable game to look at. I like looking at it. I like looking at the text. I like looking at the characters and the art. And I like hearing the music. And it's just a very pleasant, nice game. I wish there was actually more of the, the older Layton games. Um, I don't know why all of the Layton games never made it to the Switch. It's just really weird considering how big that was on the DS. Like, they were so big, the Layton games. Um, I'm sure he'll have a revival one day later with the Switch 2 or whatever. <laughs> um, but for now, this is the Layton game that is available on the Switch, and it's a really fun, comfy time. Ah, next we have Dungun Romper. This is a really cool kind of murder mystery game that has logs, it has voice acting, and it has a ton of games. I think there's like three or four or something on the Switch. There's a lot of games in the series and they're all really good. They're all very interesting. They have a nice kind of art style. This is very much a visual novel type game, but it's very, very cool. Um, and it's very, very kind of flashy and, and stylish. So for me, it doesn't have enough voice acting. It does have a lot, but it doesn't have enough to put it as a must-buy. Um, it probably is an excellent game. I would say it's probably an excellent game for learning Japanese with. And actually, oh my god, wow, I just naturally put it at the right point. <laughs> That's the right place to put it, Matt, um, because uh, maybe higher than the Yokai Watch school game. That's a good point. Maybe higher than Blue Reflection. It's just because there's so much, right? There's so much language, so many games. It's it's a safe bet, right? It's a really, really safe game if you want to get a lot of reading done. Mm, I like that, yeah. Why is Digimon higher than it? Well, Digimon's mostly voice acted, but then Ropa has a lot of voice acting. Eh, very, very similar. Really, really cool game, right? Really cool game and nice for learning Japanese with. Okay, the next game we have on this list, we're getting finally down to the last line, we have, ah, Skyrim. So Skyrim, you might think, huh? What? Skyrim? Learning Japanese in Skyrim? <laughs> uh, yes, Skyrim is incredibly impressive when it comes to how many lines there are that have uh, recorded in Japanese for voice dubbing. Absolutely insane. So this game, I would say just for this one fact alone makes it worth your time. Almost every single NPC in this game has like ah, over 20 lines of dialogue just 
of normal text. That's without like story. That's just like interactions with the character as they talk to you about their daughter and how they've grown up here and they're learning how to do this. And the other day there was a werewolf attack and <laughs> like they just talk and talk and talk and talk and they just talk about random stuff. And it just feels so immersive that you just get immersed into this world hearing all of these people just talk about random stuff. And it might be a bit overwhelming right this is definitely an advanced game right someone like me who's been studying for 10 plus years could really appreciate this game i wouldn't necessarily say beginners go jump into this game unless you really love skyrim that's another thing a lot of people have experienced skyrim right so it's a game that you can kind of relive um through these uh, this other lens <sighs> it's so cool how much voice acting there is like when i play this game i always feel so captivated by what's going on because there's so much so much story so much history so much personality in there and you just really feel like you're just standing there with these people in the middle of their house and they're you know telling you about their life story like it, it's it's crazy I, I, I love it so much so I would probably put this as a, an excellent game um, but just know that I'm gonna put it at the bottom of excellent um, because I'm only putting it here for immersion. There's just so much audio immersion that you can just have and immerse into the world, immerse into the environment. Um, and you can even do it with VR. That's on the PC though. Um, but you know, it's really cool. Really, 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 really cool. Um, something that I think is just a fun time. Difficult, very difficult, but a fun immersive experience with lots of listening. Okay, now we're finally down to the final eight games for this video. So. Let's get started. The next game is Animal Crossing. So this game is super awesome. You probably already know, but Animal Crossing is a cute little kind of life simulator. In this game, you start off on an island and you just kind of build life. You meet villagers, they join your island, you make friends, you build houses, you kind of decorate things and you make your whole island. And it's just a really fun, cozy time. The coolest thing about this game is that there is a ton of language in different ways of speech. So characters will actually speak differently based on their personality. You get a lot of Keigo practice from the kind of main head resident um, organizers, right? The kind of city hall and things like that. And there's Furigana to help you read along the way. There's a whole bunch of items that you can find out about. Um, it could be better than it is if it had things like a Pokedex for the things you catch. Um, unfortunately, you have to actually talk to the bird in the museum to get that information so it's a bit annoying i've finished this entire game in japanese from um, you know start to finish and it is it is a good time um it does get repetitive once you've listened to everyone say what they're programmed to say eventually it kind of does get a bit repetitive um but it is a fun time and it is very comfy i would oh this is a tough one so it needs to be a great game it needs to be um it has to be around here because it is better than those other Furigana games um, because of this so much life stuff. Maybe Monster Hunter could be above because it has voice acting, but then it isn't, it isn't quite as accessible as Dorbits and the Mori. So yeah, Animal Crossing is a little bit better. I think I like Late more because of the complexity of the language and the interest of it. But it's very similar. It's in a very similar spot, right? Um, so it is very accessible, and it's, it's, it is a, it is a beginner-friendly game in a way. Um, there is some difficult language and mannerisms and things like that in speech. Um, but I think it's a friendly game thanks to having Furigana. It's quite cute as well, right? So it's a very easy game just to you know spend some time with. So it's, it's quite a fun time. The next game we have here is Brigadine. Now this game is interesting. Um, it has voice acting, it has logs, um, so that's the main reason this is on this list. It's kind of a budget Fire Emblem type thing. Um, it has really cool art style and everything, um, but because it has that log and the voice acting makes it a really cool game. How cool is tough. I'm going to put it here uh, near Caligula and Monarch because I would say it's similar in fact, oh, it's probably more difficult than them. 
so I'll put it after. It has voice acting, it has logs, that's great. Uh, it has a lot of strategy gameplay you have to go through, it's maybe not so great. It is cool, it is interesting, uh, it is fun, and I would say it's probably around there. <sighs> that's tough though. Would I recommend it more than Animal Crossing? Because that's what this is saying right now, that I would recommend it more than Animal Crossing. Would I really recommend it more than Animal Crossing? Oh no, <laughs> this is difficult. Uh, I've demoted it down below um, near Disagaea 6. Yeah, I think that's a good spot because Disagaea 6 also has voice acting in a log, but I just wouldn't necessarily say it's better than these other games. Yeah, I think this is a good spot down here um, for the game. All right, the next game, sorry. The next game we have is, ah, the Famicom Detective series. Yes, this is great. Voice acting. Push to touch, Furigana. And super interesting, like the actual visual novel style is very interesting. It's not just a static image of a character going, ah, right, they're actually moving, the wind is blowing in their hair, the backgrounds are alive. It has so much personality. This is actually two different games, um, but they're the exactly same style. They're just visual novels, but there's two different kind of mysteries. Super cool, has to be an excellent game. Um, it has to be better than that. It has to be up here near... I'm going to put it at the top of the excellent games. I don't know if it has a log. I can't recall if it has a log. And I don't think it does. For that reason, I'm going to put it at the top of excellent. It would be a must-buy if it had that log, like all of the other um, must-buys do, except for Dragon Quest. But because it doesn't, I'm going to put it here at the top of excellent. Now, I'm going to put it ahead of Digimon Survive because of the amount of useful language in this game. Almost everything the characters say is useful for you as a language learner, right? It's based in real life. It's murder mysteries, but it's not too specialized in any particular way. Like, it's not, like, too dark. It's not too demon or fantasy. It's real-life murder mysteries, right? So, really cool stuff. Really, really awesome. Super duper awesome. It could be a must buy if it has a log, but I don't think it does. Okay, now we have the fifth to last game, and this is Dora Moji. <laughs> so this game, I'm just going to be straight with you guys. It's it's foom, right at the bottom. Um, and the reason why is because this is another one of those Japanese language games where it's all based around language. Here it's learning how to write kanji. It's like a kanji game, but it's just not a very good one, right? Like there's much better available on um, the DS, 3DS, but it is just kind of worth talking about. It's worth you guys knowing about in case this is something that you might want to check out. It's very much aimed at kids. It's very simple. It just has constant repetition of writing the same kanji over and over again. And it's very kiddy, um, childish. Uh, this is just making the list. Actually, originally this wasn't going to be on the list and it was going to be just a special mention. However, I've decided to make this the top 60 games. And so I've decided to include those special mentions here um, on this list. So it's a kanji game repetition it's on the switch and it's all right <laughs> okay next we have ah paper mario yay this one's awesome so paper mario is a great franchise and it actually has furigana so that makes it really really approachable for a language learner so for, for me it's right up here with um animal crossing type area of games it doesn't have voice acting but it is very colourful and friendly and lots of dialogue. Perhaps I'd put it above Animal Crossing or maybe under Animal Crossing. No, I would put it above Animal Crossing just because the characters are so interesting, the world's so vibrant, and it is actually a proper narrative, not just random characters say random stuff. <laughs> so I would say that Paper Mario might even actually maybe better than the Layton game. Similar, right? They're both a lot of language. Um, that's really, really cool stuff. Really cool game. Okay, now the final three. Um, so the final third one that we have is Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. And I've unfortunately had to chuck them all together into one slot on this video. And the reason why is because they're pretty much the same thing, right? Like, they're 
all PS1 classic games. No voice acting, no bells and whistles, nothing really to help you learn, but it is pushed to continue so you can take it at your own pace. There's no cutscenes that are gonna fly by and make it difficult for you to see anything or kind of take it at your own speed. And all three of these games have game scripts online so you can check it out and learn with. Now, because of the game scripts, I would put this as a must buy, but I just put some games lower because of the game script. Remember Final Fantasy X? Uh, I put that very low because of the game scripts was the main thing saving it. The difference here is that these games aren't needing to be saved because you can take it at your own speed. It just, the game scripts really help make it more accessible. For that reason, I would probably actually put it as a great to even maybe excellent game to learn Japanese with. Final Fantasy VII was actually my first game when I finished my first ever game in Japanese. That was Final Fantasy VII. And I think Final Fantasy VIII was probably my second game, right? So for me, they're really special and I really do recommend them. Um, they were my first two games, right? So really something that I recommend learning Japanese with. I really recommend it. For that reason, I want to put it in the excellent group. And for that reason, I want to put it maybe here. Now, just know that it's not as accessible as these other games that are in front of it. So it's very difficult for me to put it ahead of those games. The game scripts are what is helping me put it up here um, because you can actually read along with the game scripts as you play. Um, if you don't use game scripts, this game is gonna be you know, much lower, maybe at the bottom of great or even decent. Um, but because of the game scripts, I feel like it's worth putting it up here because I do recommend it. I think they're excellent. I really think they're excellent for learning Japanese with. So for me, um, that's my personal take. I just want to put them up there. Okay, we have two more games left. Um, and actually the final game here that is actually currently released on the, um, the system here is a kind of joint of Grisaria and Nekopara. <laughs> uh, if you've seen my Steam tier list, you'll see how I feel about Nekopara. It's very, very lame, pervy <laughs> visual novel. But both of these games, Grisaria and Nekopara, allow you to display English and Japanese at the same time time. <laughs> Voice acted visual novels with logs and replayable audio that allow you to display two languages. Like, that's, that has to be a must buy, right? Like, I'm so, my heart is, is, is hurt. It, it needs to be a must buy, <laughs> right? So this is, this is, this is doing my head in because I don't want to put this as a must buy. Okay, I don't want to, <laughs> but the games are making me. <laughs> um, it's really tough. I don't really like them, so I'm not going to put them as a must buy and I'm going to put them here with the other games that I'm not a huge fan of, but I can't deny the fact that they're going to be really helpful for you, right? Um, so this is where I'm putting them. It should be a must buy, but I'm just taking it down a notch. <laughs> um, Grisaria is, uh, it's supposed to be one of the coolest kind of visual novels that are around. Just I can't stomach it very well. Nekopara is super cute. Uh, really, really cute. It can get a little bit erotic. I think the Switch games cut out all of the adult content, um, but it is, it's kind of, you know, you have cat girls in the box and they're your maids. <laughs> it's like, come on. Um, but it's very cute and it's very, very fun. So for that reason, I have to put it up there and um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to I have to put it here as excellent. Uh, I, I can't stomach putting it as a must buy, but it is probably a must buy. <laughs> okay, and the final game on this list, and this is really unfortunate because it's actually number one, <laughs> the very best game on this list hasn't yet come out. And that is Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5. Bo all three of these games are coming to the Nintendo Switch very soon. And you cannot understand how excited I am about this. This game alone, 
makes the Switch the best console, period, for learning Japanese. And it's not even out yet. Because <laughs> already, if you have a look at this list, it's a, it's a pretty impressive console. But with this, it makes it the best. Flat out, the best. Now, I don't think Persona 3 has um, logs in them. Um, maybe this new version might, but Persona 4 and Persona 5 does. You have hundreds of hours of kind of real life setting, real kind of characters dealing with real life problems. And uh, it's all based around kind of your persona and it deals with issues you might have psychologically. And it's really awesome voice acted logs replayable audio the best of the best um maybe it needs to be a bit lower right like similar to persona 5 strikers um i'm putting it at the top um just because of the fact that you know persona 4 is probably one of my favorite games ever i love that game so much persona 5 is cool but i like persona 4 more uh the kind of inaka setting and i think it's probably one of the best games and it's really interesting actually i was talking to one of my friends on discord and he was playing persona 4 and i just had this thought if you could only pick one game just one to learn japanese with okay if you could only pick one of these games to learn all of your Japanese, okay? You cannot play any other game. Every game is banned. You must pick one, and that's going to be the basis of all of your Japanese ability. If I had to pick one game, that would be Persona 4, okay? Because there is a ton of useful language, real characters talking about real stuff. It's really interesting. Absolutely love it. If I picked something like Bond or 13 Sentinels for my one and only game, I would learn too much specialized language and stuff that I'm not going to use in real life, right? Sci-fi stuff or crime stuff. But Persona 4, I feel like you really will learn enough of everything. House objects, rooms, schools, talking, how to talk and answer things, how to even ask people out on dates and everything. It's a very human type game. And while it does have a bunch of fantasy elements where you go into kind of fantasy worlds, it's really, really awesome. So the fact that they have the logs that allow you to replay, personally, I, I need to put it there up at the top. Um, and so there we have it. There right there is my Switch tier list. Uh, the top 60 games on the Nintendo Switch to help you learn Japanese with. So let's go through this list and just kind of have a bit of a revision, nail down some of the reasons why, and just make sure that I'm happy with the, the placements of all of these games. Okay, so in the must buy, the very, very best games of all time, we have Persona 3, 4 and 5, Bond, 13 Sentinels, Animouse Code, Persona 5 Strikers, Fire Emblem and Fire Emblem Warriors, Triangle Strategy, The World Ends With You, AI Somnium and AI Somnium Sequel, and Dragon Quest XI. And I think that is pretty fair. Yeah, I think that's very, very fair. I wouldn't put any other game up there. Uh, I think these games are the must-buy games for language learners because of the fact that they're all ridiculously accessible, fun, replayable. Uh, you can get all that language and you can get it again. You can replay it and you can test your listening and you can test your reading and you can get a whole bunch. Super awesome. And then Dragon Quest, I had to put there at the top because of the fact that it's just such a great game. And I believe it deserves a spot um, here on the top games on the Nintendo Switch. Then we have the excellent tier. So these games are all fantastic, um, but just varying depending on what you're after. Now, fantastic. Yeah, okay. So we have number one, we have the detective game on the Famicom Detectives. We have um, Digimon Survive, Danganronpa. We have Grisaria, Nekopara, Blue Reflection. Um, and then we have, yeah, those games there other kind of games that have logs. They have a lot of useful things like voice acting. They have maybe Furigana. They're all really good, but they're just not quite enough to be a must buy, but they might be your must buy. They're definitely worthy of being up there. Then we have some games that are just really, really good. Like for example, the Yokai Watchers. They're all very, very good. Um, we have Boku no Nati Asumi, Nino Kuni, Megaton Musashi. They're very, very good in terms of the accessibility of the games with the voice acting. 
Then we have Star Ocean, which is very accessible. Um, but I think maybe Star Ocean deserves actually to be the same point as these other games that are voice acted that you can take at your own pace. So I'm going to have to demote you, Star Ocean. I'm sorry. Um, then we have Pokemon with the Furigana, and that's just great because it's a Pokemon game. We have Final Fantasies that are all great because of the game scripts, and also they're my personal favorite and my personal uh, first and second game ever in Japanese. We have Caligula 2 and Monarch. They are undeniably good in their actual structure and what they offer you for a language learner. They're just not necessarily my cup of tea. And then we have Skyrim, which is excellent for immersion, just listening to Japanese everywhere. Um, but it is going to be an advanced game. This is an excellent game for advanced level learners. But it's still an excellent game, just it's hard. <laughs> so that's I'm, I think I'm happy with that excellent list. Then we have the great games. Now, these are going to be really accessible, fun games, but they just miss enough to kind of put it up there um, as, you know, the really, really good stuff. Now, with that, with the words that just came out of my mouth, that makes me feel like Skyrim should be a great game. So, you know what? I'm sorry, Skyrim, but I'm going to have to put you back here in the great. Because you're not the same as the other excellent games. So where do I put you, Skyrim? I'll put Skyrim here um, just after Bravely Default, okay? So, I'll change that. And then we have the great games. Now, these are the great games that have a lot that is really good for a language learner, and they're definitely recommended, but they just are missing certain things to make them truly excellent. So, for example, Paper Mario um, doesn't have any voice acting, but it has Furigana, it's very good. The Layton games are all really, really good. Um, this one in particular is quite fun with its puzzles. It has some voice acting. Then we have um, Dorbets no Modi, um, which is the Furigana game. Very accessible, cute, fun. Monster Hunter Stories 2, a really good kind of entry into RPGs with its Furigana and voice acting, but it has some cutscenes and difficult stuff that might not necessarily make it the best. We have the Pikachu, Pokemon, Sword and Shield, all of the Pokemon games, Kirby, Super Mario, Zelda. Um, those games are all very accessible and fun, but they're just missing the things like voice acting and stuff. But they're really fun games and they're more gameplay but enjoyable experiences. Sumida, incredibly charming. Then we have the games that are voice acted with push to touch, so you can continue to go at your own pace and listen as you go along, but they just don't have game scripts. So here we have the Valkyrie, Grimoire, Effie, Enc Encore, Star Ocean, and Catherine, Dragon Ball Z, Voice of Cards, Bravely Default 2, and Skyrim. So those games right here, these are all very good voice acted games, but they're just a little bit inaccessible with the fact that you can't replay any of the audio, but you can take them at your own pace. So they're very, very good. Then we have Gunvolt um, and Brigadine and Disagea 6. They all have logs and voice acting, but they're just a little bit lower in terms of my overall recommendation. Tante, Archibus Strips, Snack World and Persona 4 Ultimate. Um, they're decent. They're decent, but they're just not going to be cutting it. Actually, they're decent. As I said, they're decent. They're not great. So I think I should put them here with the decents. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. I like that. I like that. Yeah, they are decent. So, um, so that's the end of the greats. Decent, we have Live Alive. It's difficult. Um, Tante, we have the kind of Furaiki, the kind of tourism game. We have Persona 4 Ultimate, Snack World, Akiba Strip, the Ace Attorney series, um, the Moji Pitan, Miitopia, and the Xenoblade games. And they're kind of decent. Xenoblade, um, actually, I'm going to put down here with uh, Final Fantasy as, oh, no, it has cutscenes, and you can replay them, so it's decent, yeah. So they're the decent games, and then the okay games are games that, by themselves, um, they're okay. <laughs> Final Fantasy X is okay. Um, it's great with the game script. If you have a game script and you pause the game and you look at the script, it's great. But that's not actually while you're playing the game. You have to pause it. Otherwise, the cutscenes are just going to go by. So for that reason, it has to be down there. And then we have these two kanji games, which are just kind of interesting. Great. Yeah, I 
think that is the tier list right there. I think that's a very nice, clean tier list for the best games on the Switch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry for it being a little bit too long. I know you guys have been waiting for this for so long. I've been getting so many people's comments about when is the next uh, tier list going to be coming and when's the Switch one. I was actually waiting for a bunch of these games to come out. Um, there are a bunch of games that still haven't come out that made it on this list. And that was because I've been kind of waiting for them to come out, but they just have taken their time. Uh, and when Live Alive came out, I was like, all right, I've waited long enough. <laughs> I just got to make this video. And as we can see, the Switch, just personally, this lineup is way better than the PC lineup. Way better. I would take this any day over the PC lineup. And in fact, I would take this any day over the PS4 lineup. Uh, I haven't made that video yet, but I would definitely take this selection of games over anything available anywhere else. This, some of the best games ever made, some of the best games ever made for language learners, but some of just the best games ever made, period, are right here on this list. And if you have these games right here, if you had, for example, from S tier to B tier, if you bought all of those games, like, you're set. You're absolutely set. There's no way you couldn't find something in one particular mood uh, to enjoy learning Japanese with. So hopefully this video has helped you kind of find some interesting discoveries. It's certainly helped me find some interesting discoveries. I had to go through the entire shop um, on the Nintendo Switch. I went through every single game. It was like 5,000 games. I went through them all uh, to come down to this top list here for the top 60 games on the Nintendo Switch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank Thanks so much guys for watching. If you like this kind of video and you want to see more of this stuff then consider liking, subscribing and if you really love the content then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. I'm actually trying to go full time with this channel. Um, I would really love to be able to dedicate all of my time to helping you guys learn Japanese. I want to make more grammar videos, I want to make more vocab, I want to make more reviews, I want to make more let's plays, I want to make more everything right? Uh, and in order to do that, because I'm doing this all by myself, um, I really do need the support from all you guys to be able to go full time so if you guys like this channel then please consider supporting i super duper appreciate it and it would be an absolute dream come true and an honor uh, to be able to make these videos for all you guys so i hope you guys enjoy thanks so much for watching and i'll see you all again in the next video thanks so much guys and i'll see you all again next time see ya